Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Tuesday, February 6th meeting of the Wethersfield Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, Tony, would you help me with the uh, roll call, please? Sure. Chairman Harley? I'm here. Vice Chairman Margiotta here. Clerk Roberts? Absent. Members Hughes? Absent. Members Orkill? George? I see him. Yes, I'm here. <laughs> uh, Hammer? Not here. Oh, Mickey? Absent. Dean? Here. Allard? Here. Uh, alternates Edwards? Here. Antoniak? Absent. And Silver? Here. So we have uh, eight and everybody can participate. Um, anybody know off the top of your head whether you, well, let's put it this way. Have you all familiarized yourself with the uh, documents from the previous meetings if you were not here? I think most of us were anyways, right? Okay. Um, I was gonna ask, in fact, that question and perhaps request a ruling uh, from the chair uh, since I was not at the uh, January 3rd uh, hearing and meeting, uh, I have um, reviewed the, uh, the records as supplied in the packets uh, submitted to us. Uh, however, I was not able to uh, uh, listen to or view any recording of the meeting. So I'm not that <coughs> totally familiar, but I am somewhat familiar with uh, the, the sites involved. And in fact, I've walked around uh, uh, the 170 Ridge Road site, but um, <coughs> given that, that I haven't actually reviewed the, uh, the actual testimony and so forth of the prior meeting, I'm just a bit concerned as to whether or not uh, uh, my participation is, is advisable. I'm certainly willing to participate um, if the chair or if the applicant has no uh, objections. So to my participation. Didn't either of these, didn't one of them go before? The, even the there, was uh, a pre, before? there was a pre-application. Pre Pre-apps, that's what it was, okay. So well, I, can, I guess I'm gonna leave it up to you and your better judgment um, when the time comes and, and depends on how much dialogue goes on at the meeting here today, right? Okay, very yeah. well. All right, so the uh, first item on the agenda is a public hearing, application 1965Z. Try again, 1965-17-Z, 170 Ridge Road, LLC, seeking a change of zone from A1 to special residential development, called SRD, and a second um, application for site plan and design review. And this is for the redevelopment of the former school into 32 dwelling units at 170 Ridge Road. Uh, this, this is a continuation from a previous meeting, sure. so welcome back. Um, perhaps you could uh, start with really just a real brief summary of the proposal because even uh, uh, Commissioner Dean okay. has, has probably seen most of it or heard most of it before. Okay, uh, uh, first of all, I have to introduce again. Um, my name is Matthew Kaliwa. I'm the attorney for the applicant. This is Beth Scheckinger, um, landscape architect. Um, we, um, Guy LaPlante is, is the principal, and tonight we have Chuck Harlow, traffic engineer from Fuss and O'Neill. Um, we'll go through the things and then we're going to, I guess, focus on the, the two, two there, were, there were two items for discussion um, of principal interest, which was um, um, some items from the um, town planners. The town planner had, a, had some comments, which the applicant has gone back and forth, and there's an updated memo February 6th um, with, with a couple of suggestions for conditions, and um, I believe the drainage report was submitted, and then the other um, item of interest was was traffic at the site. We do have the traffic engineer for that, but we'll start off with Biff. Do you want to give a, an overview? Sure. Um, I'm Biff Scheckinger, licensed landscape architect of the state of Connecticut. Uh, as you know, basically, we're refurbishing areas that are already paved. Uh, there's a lower parking lot and an upper parking lot. We've reconfigured them slightly to make them more efficient, and, and by doing so, we've reduced the amount of coverage by 3,100 square feet. So that the amount of, and that's mostly in the area that's collected stormwater. So that's a direct reduction in captured stormwater and runoff through the town's storm drain system. We're putting in a vortex uh, chamber before a discharge into the town uh, right away, a storm draining system uh, per the engineering uh, comments. Uh, I should say we've exceeded all the landscape requirements uh, and open space requirements for the zone. Uh, we we're applying for the zone change for mid-rise, mid which would accommodate the existing building, which is technically, because of the occupied basement, a, a four-story building. 
and uh, all of the units within the building meet uh, the minimum requirements for square footage, one bedroom for 600 square feet and two bedroom for uh, 800 square feet. They meet and exceed those. And we've picked up all the exterior buffers and augmented them that were required uh, before uh, as a, adjacent to existing residential uses. So I, I'd ra I prefer, I know there's a lot of consideration about the traffic impacts and uh, our inability to, to adequately answer them. So I'd like to have Chuck come up from Fuss and O'Neill, the traffic engineers whose reports you have and let him deal with that. And then we can answer any of the other questions that are remaining for clarification or f in, in uh, response to any of the neighbor comments. Thank you. So good evening, my name is Chuck Harlow. I'm a licensed professional engineer. Uh, I also now work for Fuss and O'Neill. <clears throat> so Fuss and O'Neill did the traffic study for this development. We're, we're comparing the traffic that existed prior to this new proposal. <clears throat> the school was looking at trips of 220 <coughs> trips during the morning and uh, 44 trips in the afternoon. Under this new development, we're going to be seeing uh, trips of about 12 in the morning and 15 in the afternoon. So there's a significant reduction in trips from what was there two or three years ago before the school closed. Uh, we also reviewed the, the crash data, the accident analysis in the intersection, the area. There were no crashes at the driveways on Ridge Road. <clears throat> there were about eight crashes at the intersection of, of Ridge Road and Jordan Lane, but there were no patterns there. And there were, there were two crashes in the vicinity of the driveway that's on Jordan Lane, but none of them were related to the lane. They were sideswayed cars where they were probably maneuvering in and out of the left turn lane that's right there. So there are really no crashes attributable to the, the uh, facility when it was a larger facility, it was a more intense facility. Uh, some of the comments that came back were about truck traffic and how trucks were going to interact with the driveways. <coughs> so Fuss and O'Neill, we did the modeling of what the truck turning radiuses would be to get in and out of there. Uh, a, a SU-30, which is a single unit box truck, uh, medium-sized delivery truck, uh, U-Haul vehicle type. Uh, they can get in and out of that driveway without any problems. The driveways here on, on Ridge Road get in and out without crossing center lines, without encroaching into the, you know, unsafely in any, any way. Uh, the larger delivery truck, the WB50, the tractor trailer is really where that comes down to, uh, cannot really make that without uh, going across center lines on, on Jordan, but we don't anticipate <coughs> any tractor trailers using this facility. And if they do, we are going to put up signs that say, we're gonna put a symbol sign, it looks like a tractor trailer with a red line through it, and also a subplate underneath it saying, no tractor trailers, just to instill that into them. My understanding is it's also gonna be in put into the leases agreements with the tenants that they can't have tractor trailers, they, so they know any del large trucks or them coming there, though I can't see a moving van of that size to a one or two bedroom facility coming here that they'll have to stop park on, on on Ridge Road and then unload from there. Their Ridge Road is wide enough. It's a 20 foot half section so that should be more than wide enough for a truck to stop and deliver and, and not impede traffic on Ridge Road. You can certainly make that a condition and, and the if there's an approval motion for approval to have that in a lease agreement that's fine. <coughs> and there was the the, uh, the Town engineer also brought up, he was question, he was, had a question, concern, not a question, a concern about fire trucks, and he submitted us a turning template for the fire truck for the town. We checked it in there, that the fire trucks will easily get in and out of here, the truck that he gave us as a sample, without any problem turning, you know, going across center lines, encroaching into oncoming traffic. Yes, sir. Um, did you consider the three, I saw, you said five, accidents over three years. Um, I thought there were about three that was more serious, but you, you consider that normal for an intersection like that? That's a <coughs> difficult uphill on Jordan Lane, and the light is kind of, you know, restricted because of the skewing over the crest. So, you so want to address that a little bit? So the crash is at the intersection of Jordan and, yeah, so and Ridge Road? <coughs> Okay, so the, it, there was only eight crashes over three years is not an unusual number of crashes for an intersection, a signalized intersection. It isn't. 
It is not. A normal one. A normal one. Uh, Even a normal one is not. In fact, that's okay. considered more low than high. So it's very, pretty low to have eight pretty crashes. Low considering yes. The aspect of that. Yes. It could be a lot worse. So. Well, thankfully it's not. Yes. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think the light there should be changed and made different in any way? There is a left <coughs> turn exclusive. I yep. Know, going up the hill. Yeah, and I think. That's probably there for safety reasons, so that you can't, so your visibility coming up the hill to try to make your left, mm -hmm. up, up, you know, with not, not being able to see the opposing traffic. So I think it's on an I think it's an uh, exclusive turn there, is my recollection. Okay, thank you. Yep. That would be my concern, it would be the sight distances in that, in that area. Have you looked at, um, again, a sight distance coming out of the driveway and how far they can see? So the sight distances on Ridge Road are fine for the posted seam lit of 35. The sight distance on <coughs> Jordan, which is the state road, is uh, it is below the standards for the speed limits out there. It's the, the, re the restriction is the crest, right? It is it's the crest at the top of the hill. Uh, that is not changing from when it was before. There's significantly less uh, <clears throat> excuse me, significantly less uh, cars going to be using this driveway than there were in the past, and we didn't have any safety concerns then. We did submit this to the state of Connecticut for an encroachment permit, and they did not have, they didn't express any concerns with the less than desirable sight distance coming out of there. Also, the traffic signal will provide gaps uh, because of the, you know, it, it does go on fairly frequently. It's a fairly busy intersection. And there will be you know, gaps almost all the time for cars to pull out when they can have to wait for the light to turn red. Do, do you actually have your permit from DOT at this point already? Or have you simply We have not gotten our permit. We've time? asked that we sent it to them and they came back that they were they had no comments. Thank you. So they're happy with it. Yes. Well they take no exception to it, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's the term. <laughs> 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 Mr. Chairman? Tom. Tom. Um, First off, I'd like to ask the applicant if they have no, whether or not the applicant has any objections to my participation in this hearing since I wasn't at the introductory hearing. Um, I've, uh, I, we, we don't have any objection. To Thank you. I, I certainly don't want to deprive the applicant of any you know, due process considerations relative to the application. Um, then I do have a couple of questions, um, particularly for the traffic engineer. Uh, with regards to the accidents that you studied, were any, did any of the accidents involve personal injuries? Two of the crashes involved personal injuries. Um, any hospitalizations or fatalities? There were no, there were no fatalities. I don't have the level of uh, the injury. They occurred at the, inter the signalized intersection. It looks like people violated the traffic control. <clears throat> yeah, I, knowing that area, uh, the traffic control issues are, are fairly complex. You have you know, one, one going one direction, there's no left turn, or another direction, uh, there is a left turn allowed. So, um, okay, it looks like you know, the, the chief safety issue is right at that juncture of, of Ridge Road and Jordan Lane. Um, my chief concern is the, any tr uh, traffic safety issues emanating from the lower parking lot since the only way of <coughs> access and egress to that lower parking lot <coughs> is on the Jordan Lane uh, side and the speed limit at that point is uh, you know, 40 miles an hour which is fairly uh, quite fast for a town road that that's a, you know, officially a state highway so um, have you considered uh, a no left turn sign as people ac uh, egress from that parking lot onto Jordan Lane. So that's not something we had considered in our in our review. No. Uh, 
we're not seeing any crashes there now we're not seeing a safety issue there now the state of connecticut is not indicated that they have a concern with the way the drive operates and the volumes that will be coming in and out of this driveway under this development will be significantly less than the, the volumes that were using that driveway prior when it was a school and i would assume they were mostly teachers parking down there uh, so we haven't we don't see that as a need okay um, I'm, I'm not sure that that issue's been really studied but uh, i can i i, I sense the that no <coughs> one's really raised that issue before um okay i think that that finishes my questions for this at this point in time thank you okay R ryan the um that bottom parking lot just curious what the queue is on that left turn onto ridge road like if if we have an idea of what kind of cues we're looking at and then how much in the trip generation are you going left versus right in that lower parking lot i assume it's around 50 <coughs> 50 because most people are going to 15 some people are going to town other people are going to go to 15 that way so it was about 50 50 was my recollection of the split okay. and the numbers we're looking at there were i don't know if you have it but i just so we're looking at 12 trips scenarios. total for the whole site in the morning so if we assume about half of them are parking down there so about six cars would be coming three going to the left and three going to the right okay really rough numbers but mm -hmm. that's somewhere around those numbers yeah I just i was just wondering if you had any info on the existing <coughs> like non-school queue on that turning left but i so the school was like 223 co trips coming and going from yeah. this area right so just I coming in and out of this more so you know, then again, they were split up and upper and lower. So, and then some of them were parent drop-offs, and some of them were teachers and buses. And okay. <clears throat> other questions on the traffic while the traffic engineer is here. Okay. Thank you. What other questions? Or I'm sorry, I didn't want to jump in the middle of the presentation. If you wanted to go on, so uh, let me just uh, note that a couple of the other topics that. Um, Peter was kind enough to remind us all about. Did you see his February 1st memo where he kind of reminded everybody about the outstanding issues? So we yes. have, I, I believe we've answered most of them, but go, ask, please ask. Go, uh, rooftop plan and details of the mechanicals, including February the screening. Sixth? Said February. February 6th memo from whom? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, did I say 6th? Febru February 1st? I'm, I'm sorry if I misstated that. It's right down at the very bottom of the. You got that one. Oh, February first. Okay. Yeah, we have it. Okay. So the traffic was the big one, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other things that were kind of not completely vetted were the use of the porches and what covenants or restrictions you might be putting on that. Um, fire escapes. Oh, okay. We let me address that. The the um, we the fire escape the metal fire escapes are not needed by code. Okay. So we're removing them, and we will have use covenants on the end units on the three outside porches on either side so okay. that we can we're keeping the brick here actually if you see it this way if you recall we're keeping actually it's only it's only two levels there's two porches at the end and then the the whole metal superstructure for the fire escapes go on the back side of the end I'll go all the way to the top. So we're removing those. They're in fairly poor shape as it is. They're not needed for the ac uh, legal access egress points because of all the other access points we have in the building and the elevator. So we're, we'll have covenants for the two, for all those four, and there's a four, only four end units. So there are covenants on the use of that so they won't be hanging laundry out there. And so, so let's go over some of those covenants because uh, we've had a couple of these before us and hanging laundry is the big one, right? Right. Um, uh, what other thoughts were coming to our Putting minds? appliances out there. Um, yes, thank you. Uh, assembling small cars. I mean, <laughs> if you can get one there. No, but, uh, you know, uh, within reason. Maybe shall be limited to yeah. things like a grill, right? And right, a grill and, and, and temporary furniture that's seasonal, not yeah. permanent uh, furniture out there. No issue with the fire marshal, or did I miss that? Yeah, he, he said there's 
fire, uh, sufficient fire egress inside. Yes, inside. Right. Right. Ingress right. inside. So the building so sprinkler too. We don't need those fire escapes. I know they don't need them. Right. Yeah, we're, we, we, and we don't want to no, take but did the, did you talk to the fire marshal. Fire yeah, he, he's been present at all of our meetings for the you know, general review of the plans. The other, the other aspect is we really feel that, that the, the two brick porch, two tiered brick porches on either side are really part of the, the historic nature of the building and to tear them off would cause more damage than, it, than just re refurbishing them along with the whole facade treatment that we're doing and cleaning off uh, you know, all the cornices and the coins and replacing the windows as we've discussed. Thanks for the good input. Uh, Thank you. Go ahead, yeah. Tom. Uh, one question that has you know, uh, came up, and I noticed that a number of, of those that have testified at the last um, meeting, people from, uh, from the community that were, were registering their opinion, an issue was brought out uh, relative to what you're going to do on the exterior, the cleaning of the, these rather ancient bricks. And uh, what I haven't seen is anything relating to uh, the effect of uh, the, the permeability of the bricks following the cleaning, you know, whether or not the bricks are going to be more moisture absorbent or whether you're going to apply uh, something like a silicone application or something to prevent moisture from infiltrating I these ancient see. bricks with a mortar. Um, there has been a problem with some of the older uh, dwellings, uh, older buildings uh, in some of the towns in Connecticut that have been converted from one use to a residential use, say a commercial factory type use into uh, you know, residential apartments. And I wonder if you have any opinions or have you researched that issue? Uh, we haven't done all of the research, but you know the bricks do need to be cleaned. They need to be uh, maintaining uniformed appearance. So we're willing to provide treatment you know, after cleaning that fa facilitates that. You know, for uh, future protection of the brick, we'd, you know, mold uh, inhibitors and, you know, applicants after cleaning. Yeah, my, my assessment is that, you know, brickwork there is fairly, you know, it's pretty solid, but, you know, it is, it's old and there there's repairs needed, in, uh, you know, in some parts of, of the building. <coughs> there's definitely some uh, repair needed, you know, which we're going to take care of tuck pointing, regrouting, uh, loose bricks, chip bricks. Yeah. And of course, one of the key issues is, you know, in any building, <coughs> particularly in an older structure, is moisture protection because, uh, you know, water is an, you know, is an enemy of any human-built structure. It would be in your interest, right? It would certainly be in the applicant's interest. Yes, it would be, as well as the interest of the apartment uh, you know, occupants once once yes, they're occupied. Oh, so one other thing that has occurred to me, um, whether or not you've had any uh, uh, studies or considerations relative to uh, the you know, occupancy level and, uh, you know, vacancies turnover uh, of population within, within the dwelling. Do you have any anticipation in your business model relative to that, what, what's your anticipated vacancy level and, and anticipated turnover rate? We don't have a high level of uh, vacancy expected. You know, it's gonna be a, basically a brand new building in a desirable town. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a perfect location. And uh, you know, hopefully turnover is low. I, we haven't studied that part of it, but you know, typical leases are from one to three years. Ideally, we retain as many tenants as we can. So, no, uh, George. Yeah, a uh, couple of issues um, on uh, Cedar Memo. Uh, the 600 and 800 square feet units, you verified those as indicated in the memo? Yes, they were. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, we resubmitted the uh, revised plan to Peter so he could review it. He brought it to our attention that yeah, we had averaged them out, but apparently one or two were short on, so we redid the plan, resubmitted it for Peter's review uh, several weeks ago. your will provide more parking in the future if uh, if some people think these apartments could contain more kids and be a little back from the dorm rooms or you know I, you know when I'm in those uh, tend to be having more in these unicorn units sometimes now again with public transportation and so right on. and we've accommodated for bike and storage and everything and yeah well the nice thing is because we have an a more uh, uh, designed multi-use activity pavement area in the back wh which goes to our dumpster location could we could easily convert that especially if we need more handicap parking at that ground level for access into the elevator yeah. corridor and the access ways are wider out front we could actually actually we yes we could we could um we can parallel we could up to we could parallel park up to seven spaces on that you be, be using the dimension of 10 feet wide and 22 feet long because it's all, it's 24 feet wide. So you don't see that as any problem. No, no. And the nice thing is we don't have to increase any of the coverage or change any of the, the, the you know, the dimensional, rec the increase any stored drainage runoff because it's already been accommodated for our current drainage analysis. All I have to do is paint lines. Um, does Peter get any comments? Just for the record, I did receive a uh, revised floor plan because, as was noted, uh, some of the units didn't meet our minimum requirements. So uh, we did receive a revised floor plan, and <clears throat> I did review that. It does exceed our 600 and our 800 square feet based on the number of bedrooms. There are a number of conditions in my memo, so when we get to the, the point of uh, someone wanting to make a motion, I'd be happy to provide you with a list of suggested conditions. At this point, I think I've got a list of seven conditions that should be, should be attached. So before we get there, um, could we talk again about the windows? I think you made uh, a, a soft commitment to probably end up replacing all the windows. Was that what I remember, or was it a uh, hit or miss? Everything's going to be consistent. Uh, if we can't find the manufacturer of the existing windows and make them look, uh, you know, match what's there, then so we'll have to replace them. Okay. Uh, All right. Thank you. And and the rooftop mechanicals. We started going through the fact that you have some sort of uh, what do you call it? There, there's a parapet, parapet the top on top already, and it's elevated, so you have relatively little viewing. <laughs> Uh, was there any more information about the size of the uh, unit you were expecting up there? Numerous companies make a low-profile unit, uh, GE, Mitsubishi. It's very ideally suited for, you know, this problem. So, you know, those all be available in the construction drawings when those are submitted to the town, you know, for review. And how big is the parapet? You mind me? It's almost 30 inches. 30 inches. If, if not more. Plus the elevation. Um, most of the low profile units are going to be 24 to 28 inches. All right. Thank you. Any other questions from the board before I look out at the public and see Tom? Just a couple of quick questions architecturally. Um, what, uh, once the, the renovation work has been accomplished, uh, what is the planned our rating for the uh, ceilings and exterior walls of, of the facility. I think uh, the current exterior walls are required to be 21 and the ceiling 39. And that's current or, or, or fallen rehab? Uh, it's, I think it applies to uh, renovations also. But we have to have our uh, MEP consultant officially tell you. Will that be on the plans? Yeah, it'll be in the construction drawings. I mean, everything's going to be brought to current code. 
or, or higher. Uh, energy efficiency is pretty important these days. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah. No, it's uh, part of the plan is to make it an energy efficient building. I mean, we're not talking net zero or, you know, fully green, but we want it to function, you know, good for a long time. So using some upgraded products on insulation or uh, heating and cooling is an easy way to do that. Particularly insulation. Thank you. All right, is there anybody from the public who would like to uh, speak on this uh, proposal? I, I assumed as much, so come on up. I wasn't going to mention the, the attachment I have because I figure you'll take care of that. Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. Oops, no, that's out. That was not intended. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even say anything yet. Um, I spoke previously, I'm not a big uh, fan of the development, but it, it appears uh, that this is going to get approved one way or another. So I'd like to switch gears and offer a couple comments on the plan. Um, my biggest problem with the, with the uh, plan is the exit onto Jordan Lane. Um, I went up there again this weekend. It's just a terrible way to exit. And the point that gets brought up several times here in the presentation is that we're not changing anything with the parking lots or the entrances and exits. And that I find a problem with because that nothing says that it's, it was done properly or it was a good design. And maybe there's an opportunity here to do something better. I wonder if they've considered eliminating, completely eliminating the Ridge Road uh, exit and connecting the parking lots to the southern border rather than the northern border. Um, my other problem with that parking lot is the property line to the adjacent homeowner, the lower lot. If you look at it now, there's a steel guardrail that's basically right on the property line. Those people have been staring at car bumpers for 30 years or whatever. And if I understood correctly, there's supposed to be a 15-foot buffer along the property line that the applicant is going to ask for a waiver for. Um, if I understood correctly, there would be two rows of trees. Um, by the current regulations, and uh, they're asking for an exception to that. <clears throat> and I think uh, that that uh, parking lot, the way it is right now, is an absolute eyesore to the to the property owner on uh, Jordan Lane. So those are my comments. I I think if they did look at going to the uh, wrapping the driveway around the southern side of the lot. They would have to eliminate that accessory building. Um, maybe not in their plans, but I, I would like you to consider it. I think it's a dangerous intersection without the driveway. Um, and those cars just come flying over the hill when you're pulling out. There's, there's no way of avoiding it. And yes, it's going to be uh, reduced traffic from what the school was, but it still doesn't say that it was a good design previously. I think it was a poor design. Uh, I know there's some very steep terrain there. Uh, maybe it was the only option, but I'd like uh, to hear a little bit about the possibility of, of uh, changing the flow. Thank you. So um, I was confused. I don't know if I just misheard it or whether you misstated what you were looking for in terms of the different access points. The Jordan Lane exit mm -hmm. is the concern in your mind? Yes. And that's the one that you would want to close, not yep. the Ridge. I thought I heard Ridge close Ridge Road. No, uh, maybe I apologize if I misspoke. So so you would, you would propose to take the access point down there, close it off of Jordan, and move everybody up to the 
and have to come around connect, the front, come connect up to the, the front two of the lots building. at the southern end of the property. Yeah. Instead of the two exits. So I'll, I'll let the applicant uh, offer their thoughts on that. Thank you. Um, so uh, there, there was also the thing that I wanted everybody to know that you had submitted some stuff to Peter about some of the issues going on in Rocky Hill following the conversation that you had here. Yeah, last that time. was regarding the, you know, controlling of how many residents live in each unit, which is, uh, as the article explained, is a problem in Rocky Hill. And I realized that most of these units are single uh, bedroom units, but you still, uh, there is a real problem that exists where uh, residents uh, sign up for a lease and they have uh, too many people for a 600 square foot uh, unit. And there's no way to police that. Rocky Hill's trying to, well, they've made it a, an ordinance. I don't really know how they enforce it. Uh, there's no, I don't think you can put it in a lease that says you can only have so many people uh, per, per unit, but. Uh, well, you, I'm guessing you probably can. Yeah, it's easier yeah. than you can put it in. You can put it in there, but how do you enforce it? Hey, yeah, well, <laughs> no. fair enough. Fair <laughs> Someone enough. has a child, what do they say? <laughs> you gotta move out because now you have a kid? <laughs> like, come on. So, okay. um, I don't know how to, how to get around that, but like I said, when I got up here, I'm not an advocate of the project, but uh, it appears that it's going to go through, and I think we have plenty of uh, apartments in Weathersfield right now. Don't see the need for any more. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. So anybody else would like to speak on the application? <coughs> Phil Kennedy, 181 Ridge Road. I have to reiterate uh, much of what was just made in terms of the dangerousness of the, that particular intersection, and I wanted to bring up a couple of points I haven't heard yet. <clears throat> I'm not a traffic engineer, but I think I'm a pretty good observer of human nature. And I go through that intersection almost on a daily basis, either with my car or walking over to Stop and Shop. And the one thing I notice most of all is how much that intersection is abused. And we can talk about 35 miles an hour and traffic studies and accidents and whatnot, but I have to say that if you go there and just sit there for half an hour and watch that almost half the people break the law in some way going through that intersection, either making illegal right turns on red, making left turns going north into Hartford, uh, running red lights, coming barreling through from Hartford, going down Ridge Road at 50 miles an hour trying to beat the light. It's a very, very difficult intersection to manage even without adding the additional hazards that this property would uh, add to it. I have one solution. I don't know whether it's a logical one or whether it's, it's possible, and that would be to slow down that intersection for the good of this property and also for the good of the neighborhood. I've been in that area long enough to see that intersection before there were traffic lights. And I've also seen what happens when the power goes out in our area and there are no traffic lights and the police come and put up stop signs. It works beautifully. People come to the stop sign, they wait their turn, and then they proceed. It works at Wells Road. It works down on uh, Jordan Lane and Woka Hill Road 98% uh, of the time. Sure, during drive time, you may get a little backup. You may get some people who are a little antsy honk their horns and whatnot. But I think that the traffic lights uh, over the years have made the situation much worse. Probably the traffic engineers looked at the statistics and felt that because of the increasing volume that that was a good candidate to have there, but because of the topography of the land, the way that we have some blind curves and blind hills going over, over uh, Ridge Road there, it just seems to me that that whole situation needs to be slowed down. And I think that, that would help this property, particularly on the uh, entrance to um, Jordan Lane. Now, I know that's a state intersection. You may or may not have influence over what 
happens there, but something to consider. As they say, 98% of the time, it would work perfectly. You know, during drive time, you may get some little backup. The other consideration is that the way that building was used in the past, it was used during business hours, basically, and traffic came and went during the day and at drive time. Very little traffic uh, exited or entered the building at night. If you have an apartment building there, you're going to have traffic all times of the day. And that intersection coming up over Ridge Road going down Jordan Lane at dusk or at night is going to be a nightmare, particularly with people coming flying over there. There's just no way that they're going to be able to see people coming out of that driveway. So I think that might be a good option to consider. It, it might inconvenience a few of us in the neighborhood where we have to wait a little longer to get out at drive time, but I think it might be the best uh, possible solution to consider. Thank you. Ms. Moran. Um, good evening. My name is Kristen Soto, and I'm a resident of 557 Jordan Lane, um, which is three houses down the hill from this proposed project. Um, I had a few comments both about traffic as well as some of the proposals to deal with traffic as somebody who lives right there. Um, the first thing that I wanted to say is that I am not a fan of the idea of putting a no left turn sign at the Jordan Lane entrance. And my reason for that is that my in-laws conveniently or not so conveniently live 0.2 miles away on Ridgecrest Circle. And what will happen is if you put a no left hand turn sign there, people will fly down the hill, fly through Ridgecrest Circle, and fly up La Cava to be able to turn around. It's a practice that people already do. Um, and you'll basically be forcing the residents of that apartment building who are trying to make a left turn to do this if you put up such a sign. I agree that making a left turn out of there is also not a great option. Um, but since my in-laws do watch my infant daughter who would be walking on sidewalks in that neighborhood, um, making that a more hazardous place to live wouldn't be in our best interest either. Um, in terms of the construction estimates, again, I am not a traffic engineer, but as someone who lives there, there are a few things that are unique about the neighborhood. Um, all, of the res all of the recommendations that have been made have been based on proposed use of the road, so people following speed limits, people obeying traffic. Um, as someone who lives on that hill, I can tell you that nobody drives even the 40 miles per hour going down the hill and goes much faster. Um, I nearly get rear-ended on a daily basis going down the hill and trying to make a right turn into my driveway. Um, so not only is it a concern for people turning out of the driveway, but for people coming over Ridge Road, trying to slow down and safely make a right turn into that property's entrance. Um, additionally, at, that, at certain times of day, um, going up the hill, there can be really blinding sun glare. Um, where you can't see anything, let alone the traffic signal or people attempting to pull out of a driveway. Um, and so those are just sort of my opinions that I wanted to officially put on record about some of the recommendations and some of the traffic that's already been said. Um, my second thing is actually a question. Um, at the January 3rd meeting, um, one of the women on the panel had talked about their concern that there were differences between the renderings and the mock-ups that they were seeing and the actual work that was being done. Um, I believe that the example that she had given was the rendering of the windows and how on there they were darker windows and they may or may not be replaced. Um, and as a result of that, there was a discussion about putting some conditions on the property to assure um, the type of work that was done. Um, and I wanted to know if any consideration had been given to that and if any considerations had been placed on this project for conditions um, since that last meeting. And if so, what those conditions were. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll answer the real the, the last one because it's the easiest. There are no conditions on it yet, but we talked about the windows a few minutes ago, so there may well be by the time we're done if we're approving it. Other, anybody else uh, wishing to speak on it before we get the application, applicant back? Sure. My name is Mario Tomasi. I live on 236 Ridgecrest Circle. I'm neighbors to Wethersfield Recreation. 
and I'm neighbor to 170 Ridge Road. I have a question about the fence. It will be one kind of fence all the way around, or will it be in piecemeal, one different than another piece, different. Each neighbor's gonna have their own shoes, or have a fence, or that's the question. Very good. There is a fence in the proposal, and, and we It's supposed have to, to be a fence around, we know that, but it will be one type of fence for everybody, or just one? or each one request what they want. I, I appreciate it, and we'll, we'll have them answer that when they come back. All right. And the next, not too important, is we always talking about the top building. What happened with the bottom building? Is going to be knocked down or stay the way it is? Uh, there is a plan for it, and I'll let them answer that as well. So that's why we, I never heard anything about it. Okay, it was all described at the last, but you're right, we haven't gone over it this one, so we'll let them uh, respond to that for you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anybody else like to hear? All right. Well, with that, would the applicant come back and join us? And maybe you could take care of these, you know, what I think are the easy ones, the last couple you just heard there. Relatively. Oh, sure. First, I guess I'd just like to emphasize that, the, um, you know, from the... It, from the prior use, the site is going to be improved both aesthetically and traffic. And we've been focusing on some issues that are were common to the the prior use and, and, and the current use. But you know, it would be easier if this were Kansas. <laughs> there was no hills, but it's not. Um, and Biff could Biff could address the um, the question about the you know, connecting parking lots. I don't think it works without putting a, a double diamond ski slope sign between the two of them. And the left-hand turn prohibition, I was going to say something about, you know, if you're gonna, if you, human nature is if you're going to go right, you're going to have to do something to get back or, you know, turn around in the neighbor's driveway or, yeah, so. Um, so just to clarify, oh, the, and the grades between the top parking lot and the bottom parking lot are too steep for you to add no, no, a car maneuver yeah, between the and two? And yes, and, okay. and just, and just very quickly, and I'll, I'll turn it over to Biff, regarding the number of people in the units, I mean, that's... A, if there's a concern about that, it's a concern with every single apartment unit, and whether it's 10 town, every single single family home in town, it's not unique to, to hear. And so I, I, I'll just leave it at that. Hi, um, I appreciate all the comments that were made the last time and this time as well. Uh, in general, we look, we did explore connecting up through. It would be an extremely steep connection, and the, the other thing, really, two other deleterious things one is it gets we, right now we have a, an open we have two types of open space that are functionally uh, usable and uh, one's a, in the lower level where we can have more activity uh, it's a big open grass area at the base of the hill then on the top of the hill we have more social space that we have allocated for also uh, community gardens and which we think will add a pride of place for the people living in the apartment and they'll be taking ca more care of it uh, we believe with these amenities, they'll make it more attractive. The rents will be higher, and you'll have, uh, I think, good occupants there that, that are vested in the quality of the care of the landscape. If we put a connecting road up there, one, it's extremely, it'll be at an extremely severe grade. It would destroy a, an inordinate amount of land around it to make the, and get rid of those valuable landscape open space functions, which are part of the requirement for the SRD as well. It would also increase our coverage to the point of now we're increasing coverage, which would then mean we'd have to think about putting in a detention basin, which will then get rid of all the rest of the open space. So the usable open space will be a basin that will be somewhat inundated during street, uh, storm events. So basically it would change the whole character of the site to make it either road steepness or a place to hold storm water. So we don't think that was a good trade-off for that, if it, if it could be accomplished safely to begin with. The other thing is, by the time you hook up back to the south side, now we're going to have a very limited connection between the south lobe on the upper level and the, and the north lobe. We'd have to put out a big retaining wall to get the 24 feet for the two-way traffic if it became that issue. Yeah. So, which, which we discussed last time, the whole, the whole access on the front of the property is limited to begin with, and to bring right. everybody from down below just exacerbates that, al that yeah. already. And, and again, I, I understand tra traffic is always a, a big, we all drive, so everybody yeah. is a very, very vested in an understanding of traffic engineering per se. But again, the volume, of, uh, we're not increasing the volume of the actual capacity of the parking lot below, and we're not, uh, we don't believe we're even remotely ex increasing the, the uh, actual traffic volume 
that will be proposed for this proposal. And now in, in answer to your question, right now there's existing chain link fences as a safety component, I think, because of the steep side slopes and the up and the difference between the top and the lower terrace. Here, we're not recommending dismantling them. They're in good shape. That we are going to replace, and it is a consideration with the adjacent neighbor, and he was here the last time, and he seemed to be happy with the, the thing. We're going to all wood guardrails. We're getting rid of the metal guardrails. We're actually a little further back than the existing parking area in the proposed parking area. We will have a ornamental six foot high solid wood fence and that section where we don't have the full 15 feet and that's why the waiver so that he will not, that the neighbor will not be looking at where we can put the double row of evergreen trees, it'll be there where we, where we can't because of the grade constraints and the existing conditions that are already there, we're putting a solid wooden fence and that's the only section that, that will be like that. Could you perhaps use the, the map as a reference yeah. as to where the fencing would be? Yeah, that, that wood fence is here, it's over 120 feet long, I, I can't give you the full dimension, but it covers this whole area where it's adjacent to, the moment we can get to 15 feet, we go to 15 feet and double load it, evergreen home. Okay, and how about along the, uh, the south side of the property because there's a fence there or not? There's an existing chain link fence there too. It's a steep run down and it's there. We're not rec taking it out. We think. Okay. I remember know. we had the conversation with the property. Right, and the neighbor neighbor was fine with that because okay. we, we explained we would be, by the, the, the double screen evergreen planting would have considerably quicker and, and have significant <laughs> impact in, in shedding the, uh, in blocking the view to get a functional fence to, to her block her view from in there because the, she, her second floor has a balcony off of it, that's her deck, we'd have to have a, a 30 or 40, 40 foot high fence there. To so, so the south side is landscaped? Yes, it's all, the whole and south then, side. And then it's the existing mature every tree that we've double loaded it all the way down and around to the yeah. public open space in the center okay. of the, on the south side. Or, I mean on the uh, east side, excuse me. So I, I think we answered. <laughs> Oh yeah, I'll, I'll get to the lower building too. The lower building where you, it will be refurbished just like the upper building. It'll look exactly like it. It'll get the same uh, loving care and treatment for renovation. It will be used uh, for a maintenance office and also a flexible social space for the, uh, for, as an amenity for the apartment dwellers. And, and we talked about the, the rendering and they may not be dark windows like that, but they're gonna be consistent windows. That's what we talked right. about. Right, and, and we also may say that if it, that can't be replicated, it's the intent of the developer and you can put it as a condition that window styles would be maintained consistent throughout the facade. That's correct. And that's correct. I like saying correct stuff. Sounds easy to deal with. <laughs> All right. Um, Condition of the parking lot, you are paving the parking lot over again, right? Yes, we're re modestly reconfiguring it to tighten it up so it isn't quite as big, and we're also resurfacing all the pavement. All right, so I think in terms of the uh, architectural elements that, that we heard, parking, fencing, you, you've kind of spoken to all those in the, in the lower building, the windows. Um, so it is the last thing really just the whole traffic discussion again? And, and you referred to the fact that you really can't connect them. Without, without totally destroying the character of the site and then the site. basically changing the whole nature of the application. And I, think, and, and I think destroying some of the great amenities that have made this site special, so. So I, I recognize some of the traffic proposals, you know, like changing the, uh, the signal, et cetera, to be outside the scope of your work, but I do happen to know, and I'd love to put them on the spot, what the other gentleman's thoughts might be so well, that's a lot of traffic engineer discuss yeah. that. Any more general questions though on the on the site? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, Joe. Um, the out building that you said would be a tenant. The annex building, space, yeah. yeah how, roughly how much occupiable square feet will be? In it's that? Uh, I think the, th the the building the exterior dimensions. It's uh, 1,660 square feet. It's a little under 1,700 square feet. And how's it going to be out? Fitted, what type of setup for tenant use in there? Is it gonna? Is there gonna be a cooking kitchen? Is no. there gonna be seating? Is there gonna no, be tables? Um, entertainment. No, no, the, the, a big open area that they can have uh, a, maybe a com some technology, a computer set up, uh, and also you know, removable tables and chairs that they, they want to have a social function or something, and then there'll be an office for the maintenance. Okay, and would there be any? Would there be any restrictions imposed by the landlord in terms of the hours that that space could be used? You know, not in the middle of the night, for example. Absolutely, uh, we're, we don't want people in there at all hours of the evening. So they'll be, uh, you know, open at 
nine and you know close at eight or ten or um and then a couple other just back to the windows a couple quick questions one, one is what what level of discussion did you have with the design review committee in in terms of the windows for example you know i mean did you get into a discussion of whether you were replacing some or all did you get into a discussion of what type of product you would use and what they would look like if you replace them i mean the current windows are less than 10 years old uh, the discussion we had at design review wasn't much different than what we've been having here uh, um, we've committed to uh, making all the windows in a building uniform you know and if we can't do that we'll have to replace them with new windows which would all be uniform anyway right you don't you don't happen to have a photo of existing condition windows with you, do you? There you go. Okay. They'll, they'll be without the AC units in them. But right. <laughs> right. But so if, if you did go to all new, are you thinking of going to darker as part of that, as you've shown in the, in the rendering? No, no, no. Th that's what we'd like to do if we, ha if we have to go all new windows. All right. What do you mean you'd like to do? You haven't decided yet? Well, I mean, it's just a tint on the glass, so yeah, that's what we're planning on doing. So, all right, and, and again, but Peter did design review and its report get into that level? Their report, I wasn't at the meeting. Denise really needs to answer that. There were no, um, the understanding was that um, I think specifically the brick treatment needed to go back to them with some details as to how that was going to be uh, taken care of. And then the window question was, uh, unresolved at the time that they were reviewing it. So I think the understanding was uh, probably the final, when the final decision on that is made, th they may have to review it again. Like that, you mean in terms of whether it's a partial repair or replacement? Right. So since the question really had not been resolved at that point, I think uh, wh whatever the final determination was at the time, we would, we would make that call. And it, it, as I say, it may have to go back to them for more, okay. more, more approvals. I would just reiterate, I don't, you know, I guess I personally would not, you know, try to force you to commit up front to replacing all the windows, but I feel <coughs> if you, you know, if you did do something different and really spruced it up and improved the, the look and the character from what's there now, I think that would be a great thing and an opportunity to, you know, to benefit the whole, the whole area. So hope that you seriously consider that. Uh, with respect to some of this latter discussion, have you looked into or are you participating uh, in any of the uh, historic preservation programs uh, that are offered by the state or the federal <coughs> government getting on the National Registry of Historic Places, for example, financing that's, uh, that's available for restoring older buildings to an historic standard, things of that sort? Uh, we really haven't gotten into any historic tax credit financing or anything like that. It's a very uh, long, drawn-out process, and uh, we'd prefer not to be involved in, in that as of right now. Okay. I can understand that consideration from in terms of for business flexibility, but in terms of uh, you know stability for the property for long-term uh, you know, uh, preservation, of uh, you know appearance and, and the like, some of the considerations that, that some of the neighbors have expressed, as well as uh, the overall historic integrity of the building, you know, to keep it you know, well maintained over a period of you know uh, decades or centuries. Um, you know, I would certainly encourage you to investigate that process. We're, we're open to the conversations about you know keeping it as it looks now, I mean, that's what we're trying to do. I would recommend that you contact uh, the um, um, Connecticut Trust for Historic Preservation. Uh, they have uh, circuit riders and other staff that are available to, to consult with. Uh, it's free of charge and also as assist you in terms of ta uh, you know, tax, historic tax credit applications and the like. Well, I mean, if, you, if you have a contact name over there, I'd be happy to take that information and give them a ring? Well, we can certainly get that to you, but I, th I think, Tom, um, the history of the building and the architectural style of the building is such that it wouldn't meet the criteria for 
uh, designation. So I can certainly pass on the information, but I, I don't think uh, it's going to meet some of the threshold requirements to, to get that kind of designation and then op open it up for that type of funding. Um, so not I, I, I have that suspicion myself, but I think it was worth exploring. George? Yeah, along the same lines. Uh, I was even thinking of voting against this application at one point. And uh, it's probably one of the issues, well, I've been on this commission at least in the last 10 or 20 years that I've been kind of ambivalent on. Now, I may uh, not have a lot of colleagues that go along this line, um, but my two previous colleagues bring up something important to me that I, I get concerned that sometimes we treat the north western part of our community quite differently than where Joe lives and where everything on the other side of the tracks is an historic area and is treated carefully, I'll even say with kid gloves, because it's important that the historic nature of this town, the largest historic district in the state, is treated well. Uh, we call ourselves a free town and proud of that over many, many years, among other things, <laughs> but the historic aspect of this is important that my two colleagues bring up. And uh, I just hope because this is an old state facility and you're bringing it back that you're doing whatever you can to make it a quality structure in an area that feels it's being put on with multi-family housing. And so uh, that's my statement. Uh, just a couple quick questions on the that accessory lot is are there any uh, handicap spots yes. on that one yes. and so we're yes and we have a, a new uh, a new handicap ramp access to the building as well oh there is one yes oh, I, all right I didn't see it in the rendering. it's all been detailed and laid out there's a it won't be in did the that did that rendering show it I only saw yeah, the street that's the lower block. Nope. That's commercial. That's it. That straight there, one right and there. And then we have a okay. full ramp system up to the, to the. Oh, to the to the accessory building, but yeah. not to the main building. The main building has its own set of handicap yeah, spots all that. Along in here, and they get, they're directly, uh, directly outside and accessible to the okay. main corridor and the elevator. Right. Yeah. I just I couldn't recall if we had. And we uh, we put in a handicap accessible sidewalk system to get down, and then we have a ramp system that staircases in front, which that we're not required. We thought that that would be prudent try and make sure that people have w handicap accessible bus service we want to accommodate their ability to get up and into the building. I guess my ultimate concern was just that we're not counting the total number of handicap spots for purposes of the occupancy of the main building and not including any of the spots that are down at the bottom lot in the number that are needed for the main building because it's a quite a trek if you're forced on a wheelchair to take that. Right steep hill up which is why we accommodate so it down below too so we're the the down below spots aren't counted towards the occupancy of the main building only if that makes sense one down below. so if we have if they need five spots yeah. for instance for the main building yeah. and they do three up top and two down bottom those two down bottom aren't necessarily Usable. appropriate for the main we building. only need we need um 249 we need two total yeah, so we have two up at the top and, and one you have at the, the two bottom. up at the top. Yes. Okay, then that's it. That's okay. Okay. Uh, so you know, I just want to say, contrary to, to my colleague, I think we've given this considerable consideration. We've spent a lot of time on this. And uh, as, as a plan <coughs> zoning commission, uh, I think we've put a lot of time and effort to make sure that what's going to happen is going to be successful and is going to look well. It's going to look good and be uh, a credit to the community. It's not in the historic district. So we have other commissioners who will will get it involved to reverse to look for other issues. And I think we're going to have. I'm going to thank the uh, design review committee, and I will talk to my best friend Joe Hickey about it. But I don't know what he's going to say to me. But did they take a good look at this and ask the same questions that the three of us have made? I assume they did. Uh, because I, I hear this response on we can do it or we might do it, we might be able to, a little bit wishy-washy. I'm sorry. I'm going to be very blunt with that. They're not going to do it.
So do we need to uh, go any further with the traffic ideas um, that were expressed? Should we mention that? Um, I'm just, I'm sure, I thought that we had a positive referral from our initial meeting with design review. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Thank, okay. Uh, but there was still some outstanding oh, yeah. stuff. Uh, right? Absolutely, so yeah. But I just want to make sure I, I remember. I, 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 I remember I was at that meeting. I'm going, I thought. Yeah. 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 But I think you'll probably have to go back, right? You have signage. Yeah, and we have to do it for signage. The window, so. yeah. But we're more than happy to, to, to we fear we're, we're, we're at a good point to do that. So. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I hope some of our thoughts and my comments will be provided, Peter. Oh. I'm sure to Denise. That, that second meeting. I'm sure Denise yeah. can bring that to you then. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, one final, oh, I'm sorry, one final comment in case it's not clear with respect to the windows. If they do not need to be replaced, they're not going to be re replaced just to replace them. If they do need to be replaced for functionality, then they're going to be consistent. And they're going to be, they're all replaced and be consistent they're all throughout. They're consistent in Correct. the product and the look. They're not going to be yes. one type. Yes, they will all be replaced and they'll be, they'll be uniform. They're going to be same quality. Now, so, sort of like the historic district requires, they may say certain yeah. materials have to be used and uh, have to be consistent with other aspects of the building. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to go to Home Depot and try to buy a replacement window <laughs> to slap in there and fool you. I mean, it's going to be pretty no, no, obvious. No, with you. Like consistency. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> so, so I, I was just going to say, I guess. Theoretically, we could say what the applicant has just said mm -hmm. in our approval yeah. that the windows are to be uniform. And I guess I'm wondering if we could actually go an extra step and say, in addition to the extent that they are repairing or replacing any, we'd like them to submit the plan and what they propose to do for review by mm -hmm. staff or mm -hmm. us or something. I, I think you're absolutely right. There are ways to make sure that that gets into the record and are, and are held to it. Um, again, I, th I think the traffic operations out, at this, out on the street are, you know, they're certainly beyond the scope of this particular property owner. Um, but Charles, since I know you know the intersection <coughs> and I know you have a history, what would your responses be in terms of a stop sign control? And where I'm heading here is, I mean, it may be appropriate for this commission to turn around and tell DOT, you know, or as a town, <coughs> We'd like you to consider just as you know a, a backdrop to this conversation so we didn't count the intersection existing volumes and where it is today whether it would operate as a multi-way stop or four-way stop versus a traffic signal you really need to do a study to do that right so you'd have to check the volumes if the volumes have dropped significantly since the signal was put in and that's possible a lot of numbers in the state have gone down over time we're doing a lot more road diets all over the place because the volumes on our four lane roads really aren't there anymore. So it's possible that a study would show that a different type of traffic control at this intersection would work beyond a traffic signal. Uh, I wouldn't say a roundabout because of the grades. That wouldn't be <laughs> one of the <laughs> intersections that would work. But yeah. multi-way stop could work. The only thing with multi-way stop is that grade in the winter is a tough one to do on multi-way stop with a traffic signal there's better odds that you'll be moving up the hill when you get there. I mean, it, you will be stuck stopping there sometimes, but it's not every time, right. so. And as a user of the Ridge Road, the other Ridge Road, the, other, the stop well, sign, uh, I, know yeah. I know there's plenty of reasons why you don't <laughs> want that stop sign that. there. <laughs> George. Two key people here, and I'll point each of them to you, and to them. Uh, can you petition, could that lady, for example, or you know, it's possible, or others, Petition the State Traffic Commission in a discussion of this particular site and intersection <coughs> that may be taking place. <coughs> I'm sure they have, or you've already done with them. Not, I'm not so they can. There's certainly anybody is welcome to write a letter to the commissioner, to the traffic, the uh, Division of Traffic Engineering, or to the State Traffic, the OSTA Office of State Traffic Administration. It used to be the State Traffic Commission. They had everybody changes their names, right? The Different name? letters. <laughs> Office of State Traffic yeah, Administration. <laughs> so. And they would review it. I mean, it would, okay. it's, it's, you know, if the town were to ask that, it would probably get higher standing. Right. I don't want to say they wouldn't. They do take letters from when I was working there. Letters from citizens were constant, and we looked at everything they wrote to us. I mean, it, it would, a, a private citizen could certainly ask that question, and it would be reviewed as it could be. 
the first thing that they would do if a private citizen asked was we would have called the town and say, what do you think? You think this is a good idea or not? If the town says, you don't think it's a good idea, then the Department of Transportation is not going to go any further. If the town says, yeah, it's a great idea, or at least, yes, we want you to look at it, they would go for forward. Well, the gentleman here uh, has seen that intersection <coughs> at certain high, many times in the past while he's probably lived there. So he, when he's reciting this sort of thing, he may have strong feelings that something else might have worked in the past, might still be partially or somewhat considered today. Traffic conditions change, and, yeah, yeah. you know, maybe but, a, different, but, a different way would work. I, don't, I wouldn't... I don't know. Pay attention to that. It, it doesn't, doesn't, they do. You wouldn't know. He's, he was the head of traffic. That's why I put it oh. there. He's the, guy you, he's the guy you write to. <laughs> <laughs> or you used to. You used to write to me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not any longer. <laughs> and, and I appreciate your word of the petition. That's the, that's the better word. I was stumbling over how to say it. But, you know, the town could petition the DOT if we thought it was worth doing. You know, as a result of the conversation going on here, that's, that's what I was getting at. <coughs> Other, other questions for the applicant? Other questions for the public at this point? <coughs> okay. I just have one. You were talking fence before. Some fence that had been talked about then could have got some better classification on it. Could the city on a five step turn on a property on a ridge road obtain that fence? It was put up there to keep the kids in the playground. Do you remember that? Right. It's the one here. No, no. It's what? South and the playgrounds here have been there standing the fence before that for years, decades, and it's been a fence line. <coughs> I'm just wondering whether there's a real need to have that there or whether that could be removed. So I can't remember the property owner who was here talking to us about that before. She, she was fine with it as long as we've had the evergreen and screen. And so. You mean it's up on the? You mean it's up you on up, the road? You mean up by the on the road, yeah, on Ridge Road? Yeah. yeah. The reason that's there, I assume, oh, is right. is there's a there's a drop off off a wall that's that's that it would be constant. It wasn't there to get the public school or anything because there's a playground there here, and they wanted to keep the kids in the playground. Well, I think that fence is important there because it, it's w it would be constitute. We. Uh, it's a guardrail at that I point know, exactly because of the drop over there's a there's a big transformer pad and then there's a retaining wall that's over two and a half feet high so that would be it's in effect a guardrail now for, no it's oh, guardrail for, for pedestrians because we're concerned. making a connection to the sidewalk to bridge road he needs it's a safety feature for the top side feature not for the top children right. in the middle. Yeah. well <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> changing change. codes yeah exactly <laughs> it has exactly. to meet code now yeah hey, if we could Actually, we've had uh, asbestos and lead-based paint tests done at the building. Uh, there is no known presence of asbestos or lead-based paint there currently. They probably cleaned it up at some point yeah, if it pre-existed, yeah, right? Probably Hartford Hospital had to. Yeah, some years. All right. Um, assuming there's no more questions from the public, is there any more questions? Do we need any more input from them? Should we be talking about closing the hearing? Do we? Move to close. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. So, so let's talk about the, the action. Would anybody like to propose an action? Put a motion on the table. Should be easy. Who's going to do the work? Peter, you s you have a bunch of uh, special conditions you want to. Uh, yep. So so there's three things um, in front of you. Uh, the first is the zone change. So there should be a motion uh, on the zone change to convert this property to the SRD uh, zoning district. I I did uh, in back in December. You received a memo from me which summarized. Uh, the highlights of the plan of conservation and development that was adopted in 2013. Uh, I referenced the 
uh, standards from your zoning regulations in section 10 and I also made reference to page 73 of the 2013 plan uh, regarding the housing recommendations and, and specifically in that memo uh, the site um, was recommended uh, for some consideration for for housing opportunities um, it's on a bus route uh, it's nearby business uh, development and it's uh, near similar uh, land uses in the neighborhood. So those are some of the criteria that were used in the in the recommendations from the plan of development. So there should be a, a motion specific to the zone change. Secondly, there should be a motion specific to the site plan application. Just to remind you, there are three waivers that the applicant is requesting, two for landscaping and two for parking. Um, I have eight conditions uh, that you should uh, discuss and consider. Uh, I would suggest those conditions, um, uh, there should be a, a caveat on that, that these conditions should be satisfied uh, to the uh, uh, staff, town staff satisfaction, sorry. Uh, so the first one was the rooftop mechanical screening. Uh, second was uh, removing the fire escape stairs. Third, uh, restriction on the uh, outside uh, permitted activity on the porches. Four, uh, that whatever the final determination on the windows, uh, that uh, the treatment is consistent and it may require uh, further uh, uh, co commission approval, design review particularly. Uh, five, uh, that the tractor trailer uh, delivery uh, restriction and signage be included. Six, uh, there was a condition from the town uh, engineer regarding the town drainage connection and that a hold harmless agreement be provided. Seven, uh, that the final details of the exterior uh, repairs to the brick, the cleaning, and then the treatment of that be provided to town staff. And then eight, that uh, there be some restrictions on the use of the accessory structure, particularly as it relates to uh, activities uh, in the evening. Uh, and then, so that was the second uh, action. And then the third action, if you looked at the memo from the town engineer, uh, he, was, he was suggesting that the commission also uh, grant a positive referral to the town council on the acceptance of the triangular uh, right-of-way uh, on the corner uh, there. Uh, so the council is the final uh, arbiter of that, but this commission gets a, a referral on that. So uh, first zone change, second site plan with eight conditions, and then third, a positive referral to the town council on the triangular uh, right-of-way. Uh, Peter, a question on the one of the conditions for the use of the porches. We talked about that. I, in the past, I think we've actually had a list of conditions rather than just say conditions. We haven't talked about you know specific conditions. Yeah, I, I think we 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 did a similar uh, condition on the Borden uh, yes. project on those outdoor uh, patios. Uh, I I think. You talked about a bunch of different restrictions on what they can and cannot do out there. Couldn't hang towels and things like that. Uh, we haven't yet uh, worked out the final details of that, but I would suggest that similar provisions to that. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. Rather, rather, because yeah. there's a special condition of conditions. What are the conditions? So I think as, as long as uh, town staff, uh, and obviously we would bring in the town attorney, is at the table, you could handle that at the staff level, and we could use the, uh, the board and, uh, as the model. I'm comfortable of using the model that we use for the board and yep. we spent some time on those conditions of implementing those conditions as a part of this application. Right. And that's in your conditions. Yes, that was one of the conditions. Yeah. That would be the part of the conditions. So, to the so no hot tubs, no uh, broken down refrigerators, things like that, you know. Hanging laundry. Hanging uh, laundry, that kind of thing. Sure. A small a over yes, that kind of thing. So I was keeping a pretty detailed list of the the topics and you got all mine and I guess on that last one how did you say it in terms of the porches I'm just curious on the porches yeah. uh, they would they would we would have a, a series of restrictions uh, to the satisfaction of town staff on what they can and cannot do on the porches okay so um, when we, we we did the Borden project we talked about you know uh, allowing and, or, and not allowing things, uh, drying towels. We, we went through a whole. Hanging just to, laundry. Just, I mean, just as a catch-all, it sounds like in, es in essence what we're saying is the, the it's to be documented to the satisfaction of staff, but the intent is to prevent resident or use by any other parties that would in any way you know, be impactful on the property or the surrounding area, noise, aesthetics, et cetera, right? I mean, that's kind of what we're getting at. Yeah, I mean, it would be a it would be a series of 
comprehensive, right, you know, right. right. Okay, but it seems like they were okay. Is, is it sufficient that we can just refer to the restrictions we used on the board? And I don't have a list of those restrictions in front of me at this point. Don't need a list. Uh, if we're gonna and, adopt and, some. and we haven't worked those out yet either, so both of them would be in a state of flux, but I think we can, you know, use uh, whichever one comes in first as, as the model for the other one. So. Uh, this one might end up being ahead of the board because we're still working on some or things. Or so the restrictions satisfactory to staff. A and the town attorney, right. I would want him involved as well. And uh, forgive me if I if I misheard or didn't hear, did any, uh, you're, you had eight to recommendations for conditions. Uh, which one or did any address the, the, the issue of the uh, consistency of uh, window treatment? Yes, that was number four. Okay. Yep. So it's, it sounds like your eight conditions pretty much cover mm -hmm. all of the uh, uh, concerns, conditions that, that uh, uh, <coughs> the commission has articulated relative to at least the, the architectural and site design for this, this, for this uh, property. Yes. Do you have to give a statement of the brick and stuff you cut at that time? I tend to think so. Okay. I, I think we've mentioned it to, you know, we've mm -hmm. referenced it to the owner and, and it's in there. And it's in, it's in, it's part and parcel of, uh, you know, mm -hmm. what staff are going to be doing and, and is at least referenced in the conditions that have been articulated. And on, on the Hove harmless agreement, I would suggest you just include language that says, you know, in a form acceptable to staff and the town attorney as opposed to them just unilaterally filing. No, there's a standard, uh, the town engineer referenced, there's a standard agreement which he may have even attached okay. to his memo. Okay. So there's a there's a standard document already that exists that the town uses, so. Okay, so um, we need two motions, um, three motions. Let's start with the first one which is. Quest question, um, does each motion, I mean there, there's really two motions or two approvals here. One's you know, one is the, the aspect of the zone change and then the other is site plan approval. Uh, which one of those would it would have the conditions attached or would both? Site plan. That's, That's what plan. I thought. The, the zoning change would not have those conditions. Can't condition a zone change. Right. But I think that all the motions should be contingent, approval of the motions to be contingent on all three motions being accepted. So we have a we have a voting on a zone change, but we also have the I'm not satisfied with the zone change if we're not going to approve the site plan. Yeah, um, is there anything new in zoning that you're aware of that we make a zone change? And I know what I've always wanted over the years, and we've gotten it. Uh, no zone change without a plan to follow it. Now, can we put any condition in that? is a uh, zone change would be null and void if the plan does not go forward. So the answer to your question, and uh, Joe can certainly weigh in on, on this as well, there is, you, there's no such thing as a, a conditional zone change, and we, we've wrestled with this as it relates to this, this type of project. So we uh, have put regulations together that the both, you know, they both have to be submitted at the same time, so when you approve the zone change, theoretically, you're also approving the site plan. If the project never came to fruition, and at some point down the road, you didn't like the fact that this was still zoned multifamily, you could initiate another zone change back uh, on your own initiative because as a commission. Way. But that's that's the only way we have, and we have gone back in one instance that I recall and rezoned a property back, and then they had to come back in again and uh, rezone it. So uh, that's that would be the solution to that. But in essence, you're approving the zone change without conditions but you're approving the site plan with all of those caveats and uh, you know we uh, fully believe the two will go forward together but they are, they are not necessarily so tied together. Well, I guess just a couple of general thoughts. One is I mean I, I think there are ways we could consider in the future to maybe more expressly link the zone change to the development approval. We might have to call it something else but I think there are ways that you can do that so you're allowing a certain type of use contingent on that exact plan. But for right now, I mean, it seems to me, number one, we're acting on a record where we approved the zone change knowing what we were told we were gonna get. And number two, um, I think maybe the waivers of the landscaping setbacks and those things that they're asking for, those are tied to the plan 
that were being yeah. shown. So technically, if somebody were to come in later and try to do a whole different project, I don't, I, I would argue that those <coughs> waivers would no longer apply and they'd have to come back and get new waivers. So I think that could serve as a check on uh, making sure the development is as presented. I totally agree with you. I, I, um, I don't I'm think it, it's a problem. I mean, for God forbid, you know, this project does not go forward for whatever reason if it's approved. If it is commissioned to go back and you know, move to rezone it back to A1. I mean, that's. Yeah, and, that's and then anything, that's di apparently any, anything different, anything to different is going to have to come back anyway. So if this developer doesn't go forward with this specific plan, with these specific conditions, uh, they're going to have somebody's going to have to come back uh, and deal with you again. So you're not losing control of that like you wouldn't with any other project. So it is, it is to a certain extent tied right. together, but not in right. terms of a condition on the zone change. And, and if, you have a, if you have a concern on the second vote and the conditions that are proposed for that second uh, motion that we intend to have, um, you shouldn't be voting positively for the first one. And I suppose, is there anything that would stop us from just having a little discussion and consensus before we even start voting to see where people's thinking is on, right. on the two components of this application? No, probably not. Um, so, I mean, I'll, I'll start. I, and I, I expressed it last time, which is that, you know, <laughs> the, the zone change, the zone change, I, I consider the zone change and the proposed plan to be consistent with the, you know, with what's been put forth in the plan of consultation and development. And I don't see a viable alternative. This is, in my opinion, a best use of the current site and the alternatives to it are probably not reasonable financially for anybody to come along and, and do something differently. So, uh, you know. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. In other words, you don't see a single family subdivision going in on that quadrant? No. No. Okay. Well, or, or, or anything bigger, you know, knock it down and build something bigger. I don't see that as being desirable, much less, you know, financially Mr. appropriate Mr. anyway. I so to me, this is a, a very straightforward. I think we've done a pretty good job of vetting many of the issues associated with it. And I, I would just add to that. I, I think if it stayed the way it is and it's still owned by the state of Connecticut and the state someday decided they want to put in an office building, I believe they'd be exempt from local zoning they control would. and you might end up with a bigger traffic generator and a more intense that, that, use. That, that, I'm glad you brought that up, Joe, because that's an important point that I hadn't even thought about. And I know that's exactly the case. So, uh, you know, I, I think that one of, the, one of the neighbors sitting on the second row came before us the first time and gave to me the clearest explanation of why this project uh, should be approved. I think it was you that indicated that what else are we going to do with this property when we have school buses lined up, 22 school buses lined up for an hour with diesel fuels, uh, di with diesel fumes and bus drivers hanging out on people's lawns. Um, and we have a building that uh, economically to tear down uh, to replace with single with a couple with a few single family homes is not economically viable. Uh, we have a building that is deteriorating as we speak before us, and we've had other projects in town that are de in the Silasine Highway deteriorating, uh, <coughs> and we have a building on uh, Jordan Lane which is a deteriorating the old uh, facility, uh, and we have an opportunity to to bring this this property back onto the tax rolls. Um, and restore it uh, to the beauty that it was before, uh, I think is, uh, is a no-brainer for the town of Wethersfield and it's an advantage and I think that is an important aspect in the zone change as well as whether or not uh, this is compatible and good for the community. And I absolutely think it is. I think it's a win-win for, for the town. So, so you know, unless other people are going to move forward and give us their opinions before we do the, the vote. Would I'll, I'll indicate, you know, my direction, which is with, with some reservations, I think this, this is a reasonable use of, of this property. It's certainly edu ecologically the, the best use uh, for, uh, for the site. Uh, there would be uh, really highly negative ecological consequences for 
uh, tearing this building down and building something new uh, that's also very energy inefficient. So the preservation and, and future use of this building, I think, is, is uh, overall very b beneficial. Uh, I think it does create opportunity for uh, providing uh, decent, safe, uh, habitable housing for uh, people for, uh, for years to come. Um, uh, my, my chief concerns remain with the, the traffic, but I don't see that as being capable of being resolved through this application process. And, um, and so while I tend to have <coughs> those residual concerns, I would tend to favor uh, you know, the application, uh, the waivers included, uh, you know, assuming that uh, the eight uh, conditions are articulated by the town planner are also adopted uh, as, as a part of the resolution for approval for the site plan. All right, thank you. I, I think at this point, you know, that's probably sufficient. I, I think we know where we're going to go. Could I s hear a very simple motion on the SRD? I'll make a motion. Change the zone. application to approve 1965-17Z, uh, uh, 170 Ridge Road, seeking a, uh, for a zone change from A1 to a special residential development. All right. And is there a second to that motion? Second, second. All right, Tom. All right. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Is there anybody opposed? Everybody? Okay, that's eight, that's eight of us. All right. On the second issue, do I hear a motion? Is there to do that one? I'll make, is it ready? I'll make gotcha. a motion uh, to approve application number 1965-17Z uh, for a site plan approval with the eight conditions um, as stated previously. And the three waivers. And the three waivers. Okay. Further discussion on any of those eight and or the waivers? Give me a second. Oh, thank you. Would you like to be my second I'll again? Second. All right. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 And I assume that there are nobody opposed? Okay. Passes with eight. Uh, you're, you are not? I'm in favor. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Get to work. Thank you. Oh, Thank yeah, you. we need to move on to the third one, right. Good Frank luck. Yeah. All right, so as a, as a note keeping, we're going to do one more. So motion. You uh, I'm sorry. Approval for the town council to triangular parcel. To what? For the triangular parcel. So we need the to triangular tell the, parcel. We need to the right of way. We need to tell the town council to, con con to you know, accept the triangular to parcel. The triangle. Okay. okay. And this would be a parcel of the, par the uh, actual title transferred to the town, or would it be right of way? Uh, I think they said it's title. town right of way. To it's, it's title. Uh, it's their property to yeah. us in title. Okay, I'll I'll move. Uh, I got the motion. Do you second? I'll second. There you go. <laughs> Clean slate. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. Thanks for reminding us. All right. Anybody need a breather? Are we moving on to item two? Item two, a public hearing for application 1968-17-Z, Midas Hospitality, LLC, or Midas. I made the same mistake last time. Seeking a special permit in accordance with section 3.2.2, 5.2, 6.1, and 6.2 of the regs to construct a 10,000 square foot daycare facility and its associated improvements. Welcome back, gentlemen. We got all the consultants here tonight. Bustin O'Neill, CJM. Lewis Berger. Anybody else? Bachner. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so as a reminder, uh, this has also been before us before. This is a continuation of the hearing. And Peter put together a memo kind of summarizing where we are. And if we were so inclined, suggested, suggested conditions on any motion eventually. Uh, and I believe there's 
interestingly enough, eight, eight conditions in his February 5th memo. Um, would you like me to turn it over to you and summarize where you think we left off? Or sure. would you rather just, um, actually I'm trying to remember which, what would be the best way to do it. You want we, we do have a couple things that we would like to respond to where I, where I think we left off okay. last month. Let's do that. <coughs> for the, uh, commission members, for the record, uh, Kevin Johnson, Close Jensen and Miller. Uh, with me this evening is Mr. Corey Garrow, also of Close Jensen and Miller, and Mr. Vid Mitta, uh, owner of Comfort Inn and uh, the proposed daycare parcel. So, during our presentation in January, um, there was discussion about green space, required waivers, and such. Uh, I believe the commission had some concerns about the green space, asked us to look into the possibility of adding some more green space. We, we did take a look at that. Um, we looked at the possibility of doing 16 foot deep parking spaces. Zoning regulations do allow that where you have an eight foot deep or wider or deeper uh, landscaped area. So of the three parcels, uh, we identified several areas. Uh, they're outlined in the green where we thought we could do 16 foot deep spaces and, and gain some additional green space. Um, a quick calculation, uh, the total of those various green areas uh, would equate to approximately 1,254 additional square feet of green space. Now, also at last month's meeting as part of our discussion regarding truck turn, turning, templates and so forth, uh, there was a concern with this traffic island that's on the CLMP or excuse me, the Eversource Energy Parcel um, that perhaps the trucks would not be able to make that turn. So there's a couple options how to deal with that island. We could either shrink it in area, leave it as green, re remove the tree that's in there. Um, we could remove the island totally. Uh, we could stripe it. That's what the, the red indicates. If we were to remove that island in its entirety, that would be a reduction of 466 square feet. But if we did the 16 foot deep spaces, we would still come out with a net gain of 788 square feet of additional green space. So there's a couple options as to how we can <coughs> look at green space in that one island. Um, I guess we'll leave it up to the commission, whatever your direction is. Um, but I think those were the two major points where um, we were what we were going to look into. Um, the, the 16 foot parking spaces means that you're expecting a vehicle to park over the curb. Correct. A couple feet over. That, that's, I think that was the intent of the zoning regulation where you have eight foot of green space or landscaping where you could have an overhang. Do if you, only, if you only had three or four feet, then that probably would not work. Any special signing needed for those kind of spots? Or no, you know, I don't, don't think so. Compact or anything like no, it, it wouldn't be a compact space. Yeah, That's narrower. Yeah, I just wondered if there was like a different right. designation. Right. Um, now, if you do recall, um, we handed out revised plans that responded to staff comments as of the uh, January 3rd hearing. Um, again, that was another concern of the commission. Part of the reason I think you tabled it was to allow staff to review our responses, review the revised plans. Uh, subsequent to that, we did receive another memo from the town engineer uh, with approximately 10 uh, comments. Um, I don't think we have any issues uh, with nine of the comments. Um, item number one, however, um, that has to do with placing a condition on uh, the truck parking, that all the trucks be out of that parking lot by 6.30 a.m. in the morning. 
Now, if you do recall, my response to comments that I submitted last month, uh, we said, uh, I said um, that the hotel would instruct any truckers that came in that they would have to leave by 6.30 in the morning. Well, Mr. Mitta brought it to my attention. That's okay for the truckers that drive during the day and sleep at night, but they also have truckers that drive at night and come in towards the morning and will sleep during the day. Um, so to put a condition of that on this plan would be a detriment to his business. So we would, we're asking not to have that condition imposed. Based on the occupancy of the hotel, uh, Mr. Mitta feels there's plenty of parking where if they did have a truck come in, um, there's probably opportunities where they could park in some of these spaces on the west side of the, the daycare. So um, I guess I ass assume that the truck parking is on the private property though, right? Correct. So so that would need to be addressed if, if we allowed that to, to move forward in the manner you just described it. In other words, don't put that restriction on it. Would there be something in the, uh, the, the land, um, the covenant that you're going to do, the, the, agree parking the parking agreement? Well, there there's has to be, cro there, there is an existing cross parking easement agreement today between uh, the Red Lobster and the hotel that, that would just be extended with the other parcels. They basically are all going to interconnect and and function as one. Because the intent was trying to get parking for the daycare facility on the daycare property, right? Correct. But I, I think all you're saying is who cares if there's cross agreements, the daycare parking can park in the Eversource area. Correct. And the other thing that Mr. Mitter brought to my attention was even though we designated this as employee parking, and there's doorways in the back. Those doorways lead to the playground. Those are secure doors. They cannot be accessed from the rear. So even if an employee parked back here, they'd have to come down and enter into the front of the building. So chances are with the cross parking easement agreements and the anticipated availability of parking on the Eversource Energy parcel that most of the employees are going to gravitate towards the front of that building anyways. And then walk way down the side. Correct. correct. So uh, remind me, do, you, do we have the property owner? We have, you're the property owner of the, of the daycare, but not, not, the, um, not the hotel. No, he's the owner of the hotel oh, and both. the daycare parcel. Okay. And I guess source energy is in the middle. Because my reaction is, yeah, I, I kind of thought it was kind of weird that we were putting the parking back there for the daycare. They're, I'm going to park up front <laughs> anyways, right? Um, but, you know, Pulling a truck out in the middle of the day right next to the kids' playground might be something that the parents go, hmm, you know. Uh, so it's, but if you're an owner of both, you know, that's something you would have to deal with, right? Correct. And your staff hasn't had any, your staff hasn't had any problem with the trucking back in there? No. And that you don't it's anticipate like it in this case? My name is Vig Mitter, and I'm the owner of the property. And uh, I currently own the hotel, and I plan to develop this daycare. And I own different daycares at different locations, apart from this, similar ones. And uh, this is going to be a secured building, and where all the traffic entering into the building is through the main door, whether it is staff, parents, children, everybody enters through the secured main door. And the print area that we have located is for pick up and drop off. And employee parking, uh, we can ask them to park in the rear of the daycare, but they will walk all the way in the front. And then as Kevin was mentioning, but they end up, if there is an open spot right at the beginning, so they would rather park there. Right. You have good communication between, uh, would have between both when the daycare is completed. Correct. Okay. And so we are- deal with this parking issue if this comes up. Correct, and we are putting an easement, permanent easement between both the parcels, so even in future, uh, no matter who owns the uh, buildings, will not have any issues. Thank you. Worked out with Red Lobster, right? That was a few years back. We worked yeah. with them, yeah. yeah. And yeah. the same yeah. easement exists. Green have been here, and they were having to work with that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. 
But you have inherited it. No. Questions? Pretty ethical? Yeah, just to talk to the truck trimming radius. I mean, the that was my comment, and it's it's not that I don't believe in the truck drivers, because sometimes what they do is like magic to me. But the I just assume that at some point that island, or the, if they're trying to miss that island, the one up in front is just going to get mounted. So I'm just. I wasn't convinced when I saw the templates in the old plan because they didn't. It, none of the templates look like a sure thing to me, so that's that's the only reason I was I mentioned that in the last one. I just I would rather not have an island than have one that constantly gets you know a bush run over. There's a tree actually in this one, so yeah, that's I you know as as much as I don't want to tell them to cut a tree down, I just don't know what else to do. I just need to make some kind of comment about it. My preference is also not to have the island. Is that all right? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> um, not seeing anybody raise their hands real quickly here with questions. Let me open it up to the public. Is there anybody here who'd like to comment on this proposal? Come up and join us. Hi, I'm Paul Kopp. I uh, live at 100 Executive Square. And all my windows face the parking lot and the proposed new building. And I've been there for some time, so I'm sort of an expert. <laughs> that matter, anyway. I'm here for three reasons. One, to speak to the character of Mr. Vidmeda. And we're not very close because he walked up to me a few minutes ago and said, you are Paul Cop, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so it's the, uh, and again, as a resident of, uh, of uh, a post new building and parking lot, I would like to address several problems with the circle, not this circle, the circle right in front of Executive Square. And I've had to pull two ladies in their walkers out from behind a bus over the past few years. And one, I had to yell at to stop. Uh, it's the circle problem, excuse me. I'm, the circle's problem is uh, illegal parking. And a lady bus driver spent two weeks in training because she ended up in the middle of the circle. Uh, a uh, truck driver at 3 o'clock in the morning jammed his truck into the circle. <laughs> and at 3 o'clock in the morning, it was not a pretty sight with the police yelling at him and him yelling at the police because there was no uh, sign. Well, as I have, it, there was a sign. This size, eight by 10, it's no longer there. It was definitely carved out by one of the snow plows. It's, it's not there right now. Uh, and I also would like to comment, if we have time, so, so it's about a couple of the decisions that this body has made in the past. Not very difficult ones. As far as Vidmeta, he allows everybody to park in that lot. Remember, we get into Executive Square, caregivers, visiting nurses, uh, grandchildren, children. And I've, I called him once and I said, you know, there's a liability here. He says, ah, you know. He's as good a neighbor as you could find. You'd love to have him as your neighbor. Uh, he allows the property manager at Executive Square to use his lot during snows 
when they have to move cars? Not a problem. You know, again, I think that there's liability there, but you know, it's, that's his, he's just a nice guy. They, uh, well, we talked about the buses a little bit. And they, again, the big problem is uh, signage. The signage that they have there is no smoking. Now, that is strictly enforced. The other signs are uh, fire uh, uh, lane. People have no idea what a fire lane is and what they should be uh, doing. I mean, I'm no traffic engineer, but if you cut that uh, circle down on each side where vehicles can pass, even when there is illegal parking, I think that would solve the problem. But there is also another sign that if you park here, you're gonna get towed. If we could put that in there, I think that would solve the problem as well. As far as uh, what I see the town moving into, I see more and more apartments. And this town, and I think some of you uh, talked about it a little bit earlier, uh, was a you know, single dwelling, uh, you know, family homes. And uh, I, I would like it to stay that way, but on the other hand, you know, the board and what you've just discussed, th those are things that are, I guess, progress. Anyway, they pay more taxes, I suppose. That's all I have to say. Uh, Mr. Klopp, yes. thank you for running for office over oh, the years. <laughs> well, <laughs> there are some of you that... where the front of the daycare is going to be now, and of course that no, will be eliminated. You don't have a problem with going back into your regular area, the paved area? There's plenty of parking. Yeah, it's just they like it convenient right there. Yes, right. It's, uh, it's the first entrance. Like on the entrance. circle, right? Yeah. On the circle, right. It's the first uh, right turn you can make, you know. It's is, is that why there's parking on the circle per se? Because they're just all, they're all trying to be at the easiest access point to the well, no, it's, square? Well, it's the postman, when there's a new one, he parks there. I'm a United States vehicle, you know, and, you know, he, he is always asked to move. People dropping off, and so they put their car there, and they go up 12 flights <laughs> and get somebody. <laughs> come down 12 flights, <laughs> takes a little bit of time. In the meantime, there are other vehicles uh, there. So it's, just, it's probably not permanent parking. It's a lot of people just making temporary stops. Well, yeah. And, well, and no, there are servicemen that come, yeah, yeah, okay. and, you know, they're going to put up a new cell tower on the top of our building, and, you know, it's, they stay the whole day. And the property managers are tired of going out there, you know, yelling at them. The, uh, Are you on the council at the, uh, elder, at the housing? The, the there council? is no council. Uh, I was uh, president of the, uh, of the residence committee. That's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Kopp, I, I uh, was just talking to Peter, and he could pass on the word that, you know, we should be looking into the issue. It may be beyond the scope of this particular proposal, but... Um, certainly the word can get back to the appropriate town staff, whether it's... Well, that was my question, really, is uh, in your language, uh, did you guys have jurisdiction? <laughs> you know, yeah. that's, that's, but somebody's got to do something about it or somebody's going to get hurt. And, you know, that's too bad. But Fair enough. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Good seeing you. Anyone else? Wishing to speak on this uh, application? All right. So perhaps the, do we have additional questions for the applicant themselves from the, 
from the board? Just to kind of summarize, uh, Peter has, as we stated before, uh, come up with some draft motions if we were so inclined to be uh, making a positive uh, motion. Um, anything in particular? Oh, let me, let me ask you this. Uh, so there's a landscape waiver and they, as, as Peter looks at this, he's proposed a particular statement as noted on sheet 10. Um, is, is what you're showing there already incorporated in the plans or would yeah, that, that yeah, the additional no, green it, it's space. It's not incorporated because in we didn't know what the what direction the commission be. wanted to go in. So, is there any downside? I mean, I, when I when you throw that, I said I'm going. That's fine. I kind of dislike the. No, it's just myself. trying to respond to last month's discussion. Is there a means by which we could get a little bit of more green space to try and offset the lengthy list of waivers? Okay. George. Design review, do they look at your so-called, excuse me, architectural rendering? We, we did go to design review. We do have to make another stop back there with final architectural plans. A generic version of some sort, but are you going to present one specifically for this location? Or just it, it's, in it, it, it's in architectural design now. What, what we showed was a footprint of the Shrewsbury Mass facility which right. Mr. That's Mitta just constructed. I but didn't mean th generic in that sense. I meant some sort of another. Right. But this actual location is in architectural design now, so we will be going back to design review. Oh, okay. Oh, oh okay. okay, so it will be different than what you presented last month. It, it, it won't be different per se. It's just going to be the actual building that's going to sit on this site. Okay. Ours is a little more elongated. We could uh, we can approve if we wanted now without design review uh, or subject to knowing review. Subject, subject to, to subject to review. Okay. That's what we're All right. So I I think I got my head around two memos. Right. So there's the Peter memo. has got eight uh, conditions. The last one being. Um, that there's also a memo, memo by the town engineer dated January 12th. Correct. Now, would you, know, would you have any concerns other than the parking of the truck, which is topic number, number, number one, one in Derrick's, right? Right. Are the rest of them, do you know them off the top of your head? Do you know that there are nine others and whether those are okay? The others are fine. Okay. Do you know which... You don't have Peter's memo dated February 5th? No. Okay. So just, just to summarize, my memo is just a summary of where, you, where we are. So the first three are the three waivers. Uh, so there are eight comments. Um, design review needs you to come back, which, which you talked about. You need the shared parking agreement. Um, the rooftop mechanicals, I think you've got an area on there that just have to be on the screened on the rooftop. And, and I believe we did add a notation to the yep. plans for that. Yep. Right. Um, there is a, uh, there was a comment from the fire marshal about the oil tanks, which we talked about at the, correct. in your last That's response. Correct. And then the town engineer's comments. Right. So they're all things we've discussed before. And then lastly, you would need to attach a condition to reflect revisions so that this additional landscaped area and the island being removed. So three three waivers, one, two, three, four, five conditions. When, it, when you say the three waivers, because there was more than three landscape waivers. Right, but three categories of waivers. You okay. had the entire, and there's a reference to sheet 10, which okay. had your, I think the term voluminous uh, <laughs> list of waivers was uh, used. So, um, so yeah, it, it incorporates all of those. It, and I would like to just add that Again, going back to January, I did miss the parking in the front yard setback, so yep. I also need those waivers. So that's the third one, yep. Okay. So the landscape one is all one. Yep. Okay. And then the off-street truck loading spaces is two. Yep. And then the front yard parking spaces is three. Okay. 
Hey, Kevin, I thought you'd stay awake nights trying to get rid of some of those lasers. <laughs> <laughs> I tried in the original design. <laughs> this is going to be known as the king of lasers. <laughs> so My apology. Um, new, you brought it up. New land, so number nine is new landscape island layout and elimination of the what kind of curbing? What kind of island is that? Elimination of that curbing. Oh, yeah, it's going to be Alright. And then the town engineer's uh, comments 2 through ten, 2 through 10. Comments. It's 2 through 10. Yep. Yeah, with limited number 1. Yeah. All right. So the the public hearing is is still open. Last last thoughts, dialogue with the applicant before we close the hearing. Seeing none, can I have a uh, motion to close the hearing? Motion I'll to close. close. All right. I hear a first and second right over here. <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't matter. Just one. Time. <laughs> yeah. Pick any names you want. All right. So the hearing is, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. So the hearing is closed. Let's move on to a motion. Would somebody like to craft a motion and know that, you know, I think, I think, uh, Peter can kind of summarize it as, as well. Go ahead. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve application number 1968-17-Z, Meters Hospitality, seeking a special permit with the, Peter help me with this, with the three design three waivers. Three waivers uh, and a series of one, two, three, four, five, and then uh, nine. So what is that, five and nine or 14? 14 conditions. 14 conditions. Yep. That includes the engineers. Comments, okay? Yes. And was that subject to town staff to approval? approval yep. All right. So Second. Everybody, everybody comfortable with that? Second? Thank you. All right. A motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck. All righty, now we can move on to uh, new business. Because <laughs> we want more. <laughs> All right, public hearing, application 1970. Oh, those are good old days. 1970-17-Z, Anna Papelbon, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 5.2.E.2, permitted principal uses in automobile establishment. So this is for a n application at 1652 Berlin Turnpike. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, good. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Long wait. It's finally your turn. <laughs> All righty. So uh, if you would introduce yourselves and then uh, and just take some time to tell us what the application is about. Yes, my name is Anna M. Pablo. I'm from Stelian Arosa. And um, give us a brief summary of the of the application. What it is you're looking for? Uh, um, uh, we right. sell uh, used automobiles. Uh, and do our own repairs. Um, so this is a this is basically a continuation of a permit they're seeking to huh? a renewal a renewal of of a uh, a permit that we gave. What is it? Two years ago now? Three years ago? August the 15th? Mm-hmm. Two years ago, right? Okay. I believe. So uh, I guess I could quickly run through Peter's description of this. Um, the site did get a variance back in, in March of 15 to, uh, to do outdoor storage and display of automobiles. Uh, it is zoned RC. Um, primarily the site plan that we approved uh, provided the opportunity for 22 spaces for the storage and display of vehicles. So that's 22 vehicles for display, two additional parking spots for employees, and one handicap space. So 25 parking spaces on the site. Um, there, are, you probably can all read the rest of it. We made made them put cut off lighting and uh, controlled access with a four foot high chain chain link fence. 
uh, striping and regrading. I think I can confirm that the uh, the regrading um, and of the parking lot area all took place. Uh, is the lighting all? Did they do everything that was appropriate during the first one? Uh, yes, so the site was uh, repaved. Um, there yeah. were issues on the site plan that needed to be complied with. So I, I would say uh, the, the improvements that were specified on the plan were in fact um, uh, completed. I did go up there today and I noticed some spotlights on the building, which I, I haven't been by there at night. So uh, we'll need to talk to the applicant about the spotlights. They're, they're kind of blinding and obviously he needs lighting on the property. So we may have to, we may have to work on that. But, um, but the, the improvements as specified on the uh, site plan were completed. Uh, to the satisfaction of town staff. All right. So, so over the over the course of the two or what did we just decide? Two years, two and a half years. Uh, there have been four enforcement issues. Uh, two for temporary signage. I assume for you know sale signs, that kind of stuff, and uh, one order for block uh, for vehicle blocking the sight lines, uh, which affects me personally, and, and the last one for the expired permit. All right. So questions for the applicant as they, as they care to continue with the current regu requirements. Go ahead, George. Yeah, yeah uh, Peter, why, why, uh, why are there still problems where uh, building enforcement officer I had to write three, write them up three times in the last six months? I think maybe you should ask the applicant that question. I can't answer that question, but. Yeah, they're going to be junked out. They're gonna, uh, the junk judge is going to pick them up. You're going to pick them up? The po junk judge is going to pick them up. We pick them up. already called them. They're going to take them off. How long have they been there? Probably a couple of months. Because some of them were for repairs. We were trying to fix them, but um, it's not worth it. Yeah. So we're going to junk them. We decided to, to do that. You, um, ought, you ought to be acting on things to conform to our requirements that was approved a couple of years ago. There were even a couple of cars on the next vacant parcel to the south. They're not, they don't anymore, belong to me. Right? That was that was uh, some lady from the hotel crashed the car and left it there. The car's still there as of today. It's not, I don't own yeah, that part of the property. And she don't answer the phone. Either. She don't answer the phone. She left the phone. She, we call her car. She never picked up the car. The car's still. The, the lady who crashed the car and left the car, it doesn't belong to us. The car next in the next building. Or between the yeah, Yankee yeah, Candle and us? Owned by somebody else? Yes. Yeah. A lady got an accident who, who in there. Call? Who do you call? The lady who got an accident left the car there, and uh, it's been there for like three, four months. And she said you were going to pick it up. We never get a hold of her. So. How, how does she the was town living in, in that hotel. The town she was living in the hotel in the back. Because so. this is the whole, the whole area is not good looking. And that includes behind, next door. Well, let's and he seemed to have the right number of vehicles when I went by today. I counted them for what we allow. So that seems to be reasonable from the last, last time, even though I question why we, this commission, even approved cars at that site when our regulations don't allow it. So other than that, answer this for first. So to, so to give you the history, just to refresh your memory, the applicant uh, successfully went to the Zoning Board of Appeals and got a variance to allow them to have the outdoor car sales. So that was their first step. They then came to you to get the uh, DMV licensing, uh, which you granted, subject to a number of conditions. One of the conditions was that the permit had a definitive lifetime. They're here tonight to get that renewed. Um, so. Um, that those are the answers to your question. You put limits on um, the number of vehicles. Um, obviously, you had con today, today uh, obviously you had concerns of, about this kind of activity, and you put conditions on it that you felt were satisfactory. So um, that that's why we're we're here today. So uh, and in answer your question about enforcement, that's 
you know, why the zoning officer ended up having to write the various enforcement orders to the applicant to get compliance. So um, you put this particular application on a short leash and because uh, you had concerns about performance and uh, they're here in front of you tonight to talk about those issues and, and yeah, get. I'd like to see the town enforcement of the net adjoining properties too and the vehicles that are sitting there looking crummy as yeah. far as I'm concerned. So. I'm not happy with the use, but there's nothing we can do. The variance has been granted. Um, Is that a legal variance? Uh, yeah, it's a legal variance. It's been required. I'm assuming Is it's it really that kind of thing. Oh, it's just <laughs> come on. Uh, so, so I read state statutes. I know. So we're here. To, we're here this evening on a renewal of the special permit, which had been previously granted, and I don't see any substantial change that has occurred on the property or the business, you know, since the time that the application was granted. So, I think our uh, decision is kind of limited um, as far as. You know, we yeah. should approve it. I, I mean, I, I tend to agree. Um, it, as long as they're playing by the rules that we set up, right? So there was a time when the cars were out uh, close to the road. There were more than 25 cars. Yeah, uh, but that's why we, when we paved it with, with the road, with the flower pots, what we paid from the Connecticut State property, not, we didn't not touch that. We, right. behind that. In. I mean, I took a loan against our home, so we spent $170,000 making that property the way it is. It took us a year to get it done, <laughs> and we are working hard for it, and, you know, it's, so, I so think the property looks a lot better than what it did in the past, and, and I even covered the hotel with the fans. I mean, I put all my, we put all our efforts to make it look the way it is, and the uh, neighborhood is very happy with us. They've been buying cars from us. We have four-and-a-half-star service and sales, if you can look at our reviews. And uh, I mean, I, I'm, I think I'm doing pretty good. So, so I, I, I agree that yes. when I look at it today, um, it's in pretty good shape, right? I mean, it looks looks good. And, the, Thank you. you know, since I use that intersection quite a bit, when that car was there, it was pretty annoying. And I know you're on state property, and that was part of the concerns I, that we had I in, initially. I did move right, right away. So, so as long as you stay within those confines, I tend to agree with what Commissioner Silver is saying, which is that, you know, we – we uh, agreed with it once you have, you know, this variance. Um, so stay within the, f I'll call in it a footprint, rules, yes. stay within the rules. Understood. And, you know, I, I guess we're kind of okay with it. But one more th I'm okay with it. Dan. Well, one more thing. Um, contrary to my esteemed colleague, I was down there today. And uh, uh, I guess uh, you get older, your numbers get weaker. I counted more cars than allowed, but that's okay. I think there are more than 20 cars on your lot for sale. There was limited to 20. I counted about 25. It was 23. Yeah, 23. 23. And uh, there's, two for, sale. <laughs> there's two for sale. The other two were repaired. They have plates on it. And, so and I, when you came in, I told you, that's a <laughs> repair. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I did tell you that. You look at the got plates on it. So, so you're gonna as a customer. It. You're, you're going to look yeah. at it and substantially yes, comply yes, with, with the order. Of course I will. Okay. Yes, sir. No. Um, Question for town planner: um, If we renew the special permit, uh, what happens to the uh, fines that uh, would have uh, would have accumulated or have accumulated since the citations by the zoning enforcement officer? I'd leave that up to the zoning officer and how you know he. We paid him. Oh, you did? Yeah, we paid our taxes. We got we got everything the way it's supposed yeah, to. Yeah, I don't I don't I don't get involved in that end of the the, the operation. So. Um, my question is whether or not. Our reapproval had any impact upon those, you know, those fines. Sounds like he paid them. He paid them. So, and I've been upgrading my inventory for newer cars with lower miles. I'm retrying our best. You know, we keep the cameras. What, what we got the cameras, and when they citation. get into an accident in Knott Street, the cops come in, and we give them the video, and <laughs> we a lot of accidents <laughs> resolved. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about the particular fine for the uh, the the lapse in the permit, because that uh, that's uh, been, uh, I think it expired around uh, three to August. four months ago, and uh, uh, the only, if this, act, if this uh, commission acts tonight to approve the renewal, uh, then they come back into compliance. So there's the $150 a day 
from the time that permit expired. I, I think the zoning officer gave them until January 8th to submit a reapplication and did not seek to impose any fines for the period up to January 8th as I read his letter. So that's okay. Okay. Yeah, that's, that is true. We came in December. So there's, there's, did apply. there's been a December. We came in December to I'm do sorry. that. And we we, we submit the application, I think, in December. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, appreciate the information. Any other questions for the applicant? Any yeah, concerns? Sorry. So as, as we think about. Oh, I don't. I'm, I'm probably ready to just stop there. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I guess I'm just thinking, so are, are there parameters? So think is about there, the. Is there a hearing here? So just think about the parameters that are here and whether you'd want to or consider changing them and that's what we got to pose to the applicant. Uh, is there anybody from the public who wishes to speak on this application? All right. George. Um, Mr. Chairman, I think the action by the Zoning Board of Appeals is illegal under state statute. Now, I'm not as familiar with state statutes as our attorneys are, but I had to deal with them over many, many years when I worked for state government. And uh, I think, I, think I know them well enough to know that I think that was an illegal action on their part to uh, overrule us and make make the change they did to allow display outside of the building. <coughs> I don't think that's allowed in our regulations, and I think maybe this commission or someone someone somehow should, and I don't like to say these words, but should have uh, taken a lawsuit action against the Zoning Board of Appeals for being taking the action they did. Um, and I, we therefore cannot approve this application, although I think he's doing a reasonable job, Thank such you. as it is after several citations, uh, at least as of now. He's looking good because he has to be in front of us for an approval. Uh, I, I just don't think the whole area looks good. I think it's decrepit. If this kind of a proposal were anywhere near Old Wethersfield on the other side of the tracks where the historic district is, we would be run out if it was approved. That's the way I feel about it. The uh, closest thing is down on Maple Street, I guess, but that's, uh, that's certainly not the kind of conditions here. Down there, they do keep them housed. So uh, I don't really think that uh, I can, and I urge my fellow commissioners to vote against this application. Okay. Um, this, one was, uh, this one was for two years and it ran late. Uh, we can consider, you know, the duration. I personally am still not uh, convinced that it should be, you know, forever. I would still put a time limit on it. Um, I don't know what other people are thinking. Joe? Yeah, I guess I'd be inclined to maybe go for another two from now. Sounds reasonable to people. Mm. Yeah. Any other questions for the applicant? And if not, maybe we should just close the hearing. We'll close the hearing. Thank you. Is there a second? Uh, George. Approve. George, second. I would move to approve the application, reimposing conditions. So one let, let us let us take a vote. Sorry. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. So moving on to uh, a how motion. How long of a period? I would approve. move to approve well, with the exact Please. conditions as last time. The only difference is the duration in condition six would be two years through um, February 6, 2019. 20? Uh, 2020. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. One year. Yeah. 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 Do you run it through the case? Oh, it's voter or something. Uh, yeah. 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 Two years, right? I'll just say. Uh, just say February 15, 2020, how's that uh, for the timing? Okay. Can I ask for something? You know how we put our flags that says, um, we finance and it says welcome on the other side of the entrance? They only allow us to have it um, two weeks, two times a year. I would like to ask if I can have it all the time because that's the reason why it makes people want to come in. Mm -hmm. I mean, a welcome sign looks, it makes you come in. I'm trying to make the place look even better as, as much as I can. Um, I would like to see if I can have the flags all the time. That's the only thing I've been, I, I want to ask for, please. Will you open the hearing? Because <laughs> <laughs> it looks not, good when it's, when it's Not to rain on the parade, but you don't have the authority yeah. to grant that. It's in the zoning regulations. There's certain limits. They can't waive it. 
Understood. You would have to get a variance from the zoning board. You'd have to go back <laughs> to the zoning board of appeals. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. So we can talk about it. Uh, another time. Another time, and but this, this commission cannot do that. Understood. Thank you. That, that was an easier answer than I thought. Yeah. yeah. Uh, nice. <laughs> all right. So we have a motion and with some conditions, uh, and a second. Right. We got a second. Is that second? Tom. All, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All right. No, one no. Thank you. So it's seven and one. George is a no. All right. Understood. Keep keep up the keep, keep up George. the clean work. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Yeah. So I mean, it is a game? you know a two year again, right? I mean, yes. we don't want to see the violation. We're going to be watching. Well, <laughs> we were calling tomorrow, so we can they can they can come and pick it up. Thank you. Thank you. You have to record it. You have to. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I got camera. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Uh, thank you. All right. Public, public hearing. Last one. Uh, application 1971-18-Z, Tom, Thomas Baldwin, seeking a one-lot subdivision at 127 and 141 Griswold. Waited a long time, gentlemen. <laughs> I have to give you guys credit too for your patience. I can sit there. <laughs> <laughs> you get to get up and go to the restrooms. All right, uh, if you could introduce yourselves and then uh, give a, a brief description of what you're up to. Um, I'm Thomas Baldwin, uh, the applicant representing the estate of my father, Myron L. Baldwin, Jr. And uh, my deep surveyor is here. Hi, Ken yeah. Picard, Marlboro, Connecticut, licensed land surveyor. Mm -hmm. All right, so PIC. ARB. All right, so is this as straightforward as it appears? It's never been subdivided before, so it's a, is it a resubdivision? Okay, so why don't you describe it? Was, so uh, just in, in summary, this is a, a one lot uh, resubdivision. It was uh, historically subdivided, so it becomes then a, a resubdivision, but it's only the creation of one lot and then the modification of, a, of an additional property line to add uh, property to the abutting, one of the abutting lots. Um, there is a memo dated January 31st, which summarizes it. Uh, there is one uh, suggested condition uh, that uh, per our standard requirements, once the properties are, are uh, resubdivided, that uh, properly revised uh, boundary surveys for the newly created lots are, are placed on file uh, as we required. You do have a uh, memorandum from the town engineer dated January 31st as well with uh, some uh, uh, suggested uh, revisions to the plan uh, that should be factored into any motion uh, that you are so inclined to make. But in essence, it's a one lot uh, resubdivision. The lot would front on Farmstead uh, rather than on Griswold. Uh, the plans, I think, are, are pretty uh, illustrative, so it's pretty clear what they're asking for. Uh, they have made uh, plan revisions based on my initial uh, set of comments, and uh, I think the only comments remaining are those that were um, submitted by the uh, town engineer. So he's asking for some changes to the labeling. Um, there's no uh, variances needed for the barn. So that's number two. Uh, number three, um, he's, he's concerned about some tree protection if the tree is going to remain. So I'll let the applicant uh, respond to that. Um, he wants the driveway for the new lot added to the plan. Um, he wants a concrete monument installed uh, on Farmstead. Uh, he wants some coordinates for two property corners shown on the plan. Uh, he wants the sheet numbers revised so it's uh, one of two rather than one of one. And then obviously uh, the standard condition that once the plans are finalized that a, a final mylar be submitted for signature of the commission. Have you discussed those with the applicant? I believe the applicant received uh, the memo so I'll let the applicant respond to any of those. I thought I could see them. So, yeah, it was driveway it when we don't. Driveway, 
we figured we're gonna once the lot is broken out and whatever type of house lands there, uh, you can put them on the plan. Put them on that plan, but we'll show it. Okay. We'll revise this plan to show the driveway. The tree protection. There is one big tree up there in the front. Um, yeah, beautiful. Uh, it would be. I'm assuming you probably want to keep that there. If we can, again, we're going to um, sell it a lot. And the builder is going to decide what he wants to put in there. So, I mean, we would hope that he keeps it. And I think that will improve the value of whatever house he ends up building if he can arrange to, uh, you know, keep it and be sure of work. Is it in the building square or is it even in it? I think, yeah. No. Yeah, I almost have to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a beautiful tree. I mean, it's, and it's um, putting a concrete monument, that's not an issue. Those, you know, we have to put pins in normally for uh, the subdivision to, to mark out the new lot lines. Um, mylars and, and the, you know, that's no problem either. That's typical. Okay. Peter, we have to put those conditions in on the approval or, or what? Uh, you should put them yes as conditions of approval so the um the memo was so refer to the memos in the motion so there'll be one two three four five six uh seven seven conditions we don't have a public hearing do we this is a public this hearing. is a public hearing i know who he is <laughs> <laughs> um, have something to say. So, <laughs> but just to summarize there's nothing there's nothing uh uh Nothing that requires a waiver or anything. It's no, a it, it the lot. complies in all respects um, with your zoning requirements and your um, plan requirements. So there's no no issues. We did get uh, a number of phone calls from the neighbors, but once they understood the nature of the application, uh, they felt it was at some point inevitable that the lot would be so split yeah. off. I so I would think the neighbors up there are very sharp and so. And but they obviously understood that and are not here tonight. So. Yeah, I, I make a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Close the hearing. So, so let's close the hearing yes, first. first yeah. Okay. So, would, George, would you like to make a motion to close the hearing? Oh, I'll, I'll do that. And he'll second it. Yeah, that sounds That's good. That's what we really meant. And Dan, and Dan we will get second. Older, so we do mm -hmm. things in reverse. Okay. okay. All right. All those in favor of closing the hearing, say aye. 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 Anyone aye. opposed? All right. Good make good. a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. Conditions as indicated already. As indicated in the uh, January 31st memo, right. and there are seven of them. Yep. Is there one that doesn't? So number number two goes away in the town engineers. Uh, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. The mylar you don't have to. That's a standard. And then I had one about the about the separate so one through six yeah. without two or not one one through seven without, without two, two and then the last comment on my memo so okay Thanks. yep was there any town concern about the utilities the overhead utilities going through there are they off to the side enough that yeah, they were yeah the utility review right at the time they'll, they'll have to go through the separate uh review practice at the time of building with the, with the various utilities but they'll determine that at so the time that, that right away going through it doesn't We have a motion, and did we get a second? I think uh, Dan is going to second this one too. <laughs> right. Uh, all those, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? All righty. Good luck to you. Thank it you. It was a long you. night for that, but. <laughs> Good luck, guys. Good luck with it. Thanks. We got that one done first. I was hoping. <laughs> Other so business. Uh, oh, we forgot to ask the Dan question. Is there anybody from the? How did you from the public? Uh, no. Why didn't you bang it? As you <laughs> Next time. I know. All right. Other business. What do we got going on? Minutes. Uh, minutes. Minutes uh, look good, Mr. Chairman. Make a motion to approve. Second. All right, so just uh, make sure we got enough. There's eight of us here. I know that uh, we must have at least seven people. I think we have six. So six? Okay. I, I so I'll abstain from this, Mr. Chairman. Okay. 
So all those, in, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, so the people that count are myself, Ryan Allard, Joe Hammer, um, Dave Edwards, and Dan Silver. Is that the six you came up with? Thank you. I was, I was just looking George. at the minutes. Yeah. And two abstentions. But, and George as well, because he was here. George. So what else do we have to do? I think uh, Denise is probably looking for people to confirm whether they want to go to the uh, planning and zoning. Denise, don't forget me this year. Because yeah. I didn't tell you last year. All righty. So George wants to go. That is March forget, 20. This is March 22nd. March 22nd. Is that, a, is that a Thursday? You all have to go because I'm getting an award. And so is Tony Homicki. <laughs> oh, <laughs> depends on how you count. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, if I don't count, <laughs> I don't get one. <laughs> is that what you're saying? All right. Uh, I would expect to be going as well. So as that's we George, Tom, Mr. Harley, Mr. Homicki. Any others? I want to attend. Well, send. Yeah, there's food. Michael. I'll put Margiata question mark. All right. I'll, we'll send out an email and if um, just confirm that through us. We got some time to decide. All right. Is that it? What else? Correspondence? I just gave uh, you a copy of the uh, state of the town uh, message just to let you know what, what's gone on in town in the last uh, year or so. So that's in your packet as well. Uh, uh, Peter, that, that's a good report. And I was disappointed. Do we ever get notice of these? I know these come up every January, and I somehow might have liked to have gone to it, but yeah, we don't send notices. Um, I don't know if we, if we send an email from us, but there's a whole thing that goes out from the Chamber of Commerce, and yeah. it's a Chamber of Commerce event, so they send out the... I might like to have gone to hear you. They did a good job on that. I'll, um, I'll have the, make sure they add you to their emails. How's that sound? Um, just also, we're interviewing for a new zoning officer on Friday. I think we're interviewing five candidates. And then we just interviewed 